Welcome aboard. But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to the uh, Opie and Anthony show. Uh, what are we, uh, day three? Yeah. Uh, opie for three days. But uh, fear not. We've got the lovely, talented Jim Norton. You might also know him as Chip Jefferson. And, oh, oh, boy. Of course, Uncle Paul Hargis. Oh, sure. All of all the wacky characters will be here today. Although none of them will be here today. Oh. I'm stepping in. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like the characters that are good for one day. Yeah, there are. One some. day characters. It's like, what's your name? I'm Mike. <laughs> Who's Mike? He won't be here tomorrow. <laughs> it's the name. Like Jerry Shepardini, I just can't get going. I just no. like the name is so horrible and yeah. it bothers Bob Kelly so much. Jerry Shepardini. Jerry Shepardini. He goes, it's just fun to say. I'm like, I know it is. Yeah, he doesn't like it. He hates it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, good, good, good morning. I guess we're. Uh, ooh, we in for a little bit of a broil here in the Northeast today. <laughs> Ninety-seven. Oh fuck. Degrees. Man. With uh, heat indexes, which I don't know how the fuck they figure out. It has something to do with humidity. Uh, into a, like a, a 105. So there's a big heat alert for the city and uh, the uh, northeast, I believe. I hope the news tells us what to do, because I'm never quite <laughs> sure what to do in the heat. In the heat, right. Yeah. Uh, go home, what do you do? Turn the heat on? Immediately, yeah, and I'll yeah. wrap myself in a blanket. <laughs> and lay outside. I'll open the oven and I'll lay next to it. <laughs> go, Why do I not feel comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the big stories on the news. They love when there's uh, weather extremes, so they could just uh, make you feel like an idiot. And just for, remember, for watching them. if you're thirsty, just leave it alone. Yeah, don't, don't drink, don't don't drink, drink a lot of no, fluids. Fl no. uh, fluids. Fluids. Don't drink a lot of fluids. No. And, uh, yeah, just stay, uh, stay out in the heat. As long as possible with no sunscreen. Right. Does that Please. actually help anybody? Like, does anybody really go, oh, fuck, that's right. Yeah, no thank you. one. Very Just helpful. Sitting there with a dry throat going, I don't know what the problem yeah. is. It's instinctual. As a human animal, if you're in the heat, you know what to do. You don't want to be in it. It's uncomfortable. So you just... <laughs> so you, you just... You fix it. You get out of the heat. <laughs> You drink water. What <laughs> on a sunny day is more pleasant than a cup of ice water? Right. And aren't you looking for it yes. in the heat? Yes. You don't have to be told. <laughs> I love a cup of ice water. It really does <laughs> rule. And the fact yeah. that they say if you're thirsty, just make sure you drink something. And it's yeah. Just, it's yeah. just wasted words. It's just, it's just noise. It's yeah. just making fucking noise with their mouths. And uh, the, I guess the elderly... Um, once you get old, uh, regardless if you're a dementia or Alzheimer's or whatnot, you just kind of forget that you're supposed to do certain things like drink water and, and turn on the air conditioner because apparently, from what I hear on the news, the elderly, just blithering idiots in the heat. <laughs> they they really just are. don't drink water and they don't turn on the AC and they just drop dead. So you have to constantly check on them uh, in this hot weather. Please check the elderly. There's a 90-year-old woman watching the news, and they're like, drink lots of water. And she's like, oh, and she pulls her own shoe out of her mouth. <laughs> that would explain. I remembered it was something, <laughs> uh, but I didn't know it was water. Sitting in front of the radiator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they turn the heat up. I best turn the heat up so it doesn't seem so hot when I go outside. Yes. There's some elderly logic to it with earmuffs on, but dunce. <laughs> if I balance it out. <laughs> yes, if it feels hot indoors, it won't feel so hot out of doors. <laughs> out of doors. I'm watching my stories in the blazing heat, <laughs> and I can't feel the left side of my body. <laughs> Old people can really smell. When I when I was uh, <laughs> when I was um, I guess I was thirteen or whatever or twelve. I got a, maybe eleven actually or twelve. I got my, my friends. I got arrested. Uh, Ooh, because they were smoking pot and I didn't smoke pot at the time. But I was in the car. I got sentenced to community service for two weeks. Wow. And I had to do it in an old age home. Ugh. It was on uh, I think Remsen Avenue in New Brunswick, like the Jack something houses, but it was old people. Jack Torrance houses. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> Go out and look at the fucking shrubs, Edna. <laughs> and just kill her with an axe. 
And uh, you know, he was just helping out clean the place and get the floors clean and all that nonsense for a few hours a day for two weeks. But, man, the old people. Mm. Wow. There was a couple of them that smelled. And I, I had never smelled anybody down the hall. Wow. There was such a body odor. It was, a, it was like a, a thick body rot. Wow. That you could smell on somebody. Like, that you could smell... Again, down a full hallway. I never, I remember never uh, realizing you could smell somebody from that far away. That's astounding. Like, and what, what is it? Is it rot? It's like an old dog. Also, there's nothing you can do. They just fucking smell like yeah. old mangy, fucking dog. And old people get the same thing. It's awful. Or they just man. stench. I guess it's probably harder to bathe and shit like that. I can't slip in the bathtub. I, I need one of those uh, bathtubs I see on the television with the little door that I could step in. What are those? These are the best years of my life. <laughs> are they? Yeah, perish the thought your 20s or 30s again. <laughs> uh, I will want one of those life call things. I said, that's for some old person. Then I fell down the stairs and broke my hip. Yeah, because well, you're, you're an old person, you dummy. I hate that commercial. This old broad. My daughter told me to get one of these life calls. That's for one of those old people. <laughs> like you. You fucking pretzel stick boned motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, right. you ever see that the bathtubs with the door on it? No. I guess it's like a watertight door, like on a ship or something. So you could open a door and then they step in, close it, uh, and then uh, fill it up with water, like a bathtub. I guess you can't open the door if it's full of water. It's like the oh, water pressure. Oh, I, they're like literally it. stepping into it. I say, okay. Into yeah, yeah. They walk right in. Kind of seems cool if you're lazy too. Is it like no, a standing shower? Or is it different? But they could sit down in it. It's like a tub. Oh. It's a tub, but there's a door on it. It's oh. the. It's astounding. Poor they got old some. I know, but they really are catering to the old folk. Well, that's kind of a shower thing. That isn't meant to fill up with water like a bathtub. These are literally bathtubs with doors in the side. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, old people, they, they're coming up with a lot of gadgetry for them. They're all living so much longer. It's like a yeah. new market that's never been right. tapped. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is a new market. These hover rounds and fucking bathtubs. There it is with the doors on them. And uh, there's a brightness. Wow. Uh, there's a brightness. um thing on the front one here. <laughs> Feel like you're in your 120s <laughs> for really old people in a few years. Yeah, I'm sure you you know, the best years of your life. You like having to have a door on your bathtub instead of hopping over it like you're getting into a convertible uh, uh, with a, a nice uh, broad <laughs> inside the tub with you. Poor old people. Old people. They, they need that fucking thing on the side of the stairs where they sit down and it goes up at point oh 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 one mile an hour. Yeah. It's forever to get up the stairs. There's a uh, my ex ex girlfriend loved old people. Loved really? old people. She Is it a so caring thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had real affection. And then my most recent ex girlfriend, uh -oh. if she could put them all in a pile and set them on fire, would have <laughs> gladly done so. <laughs> Hated their guts. Yeah. But my ex ex loved fucking old people, man. She had such an affection and and found them interesting. And funny oh. and charming. She just dug old people. You Are know we, what the fucking quandary is with them? They have so much life experience and probably have, like, like interesting experiences that happen to them. But they can't convey them without boring the living fuck out of you. Absolutely. You, oh. you have to sit through hours with them before oh. you get that little kernel. Yeah. Whoa. You oh. knew who? You worked on the Manhattan Project? Why wouldn't you have told me that in the beginning? Yeah, why yeah. did you fucking tell me about your hat? Exactly. <laughs> the fucking, yeah, and what happened to your derby? Why would you talk about peanut brittle for three hours? <laughs> yeah. I think my grandfather was well into his 70s before I found out that he burnt down a movie studio in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, right? Why wouldn't that be story one? <laughs> exactly. Story yeah. numero uno. Seth, and then, and then an you accident. might sit through the crappy fucking... You know, story about how we couldn't afford shoes. You need to set a precedent that you are interesting before I sit right. down with you. Yeah, yeah. Open I'd, big. I'd love to hear about how much this cost when you were a certain age. <laughs> but how about you get to the racial beatings first, <laughs> Pop Pop? I'd love to hear about that. Yes, <laughs> the racial beatings. I want to hear about the first time you sodomized Nana in an Edsel. <laughs> uh, You're right. They never go with the uh, the good stories good first. Good story oh. first. Always some. Bore fest, and you sit there, you gotta look fucking interested, and, and they just go on and on. Uh, I, I, uh, with the, some of this equipment, did, uh, did you hear the, uh, we were talking about the Postivac, which is that vacuum pump for your non working noodle dick. 
uh, <laughs> you, you, uh, you put it on there, you pump it up, and then you put a rubber ring around the base of your dick, and you're able to have sex uh, without taking those pesky blue pills, is uh, how they say it in the commercial. Yeah, that work. Those yeah, pesky blue that pills work. that make your cock work with nothing but a, a swallow of a pill. <laughs> Who needs to swallow an inconvenient pill when you can hook up a vacuum to your dick and slip an O-ring around it like it's a space shuttle? Why would you want to just take a pill that keeps your cock hard for hours when you can do this? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, why? Pesky blue pill. Pesky blue pill, really? Gulp. There, done. Wow. Turgid. Yeah, that was, that was uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, you'd rather pump it up. Uh, well, apparently a little uh, scandal involving the Postivac uh, oh. insurance fraud. They keep saying how insurance pays for it, uh, Medicare will pay for it, and I guess the government has pumped a shitload, pumped a shitload of money into the Postivac and uh, paying for it for people. And the Postivac people have been submitting claims uh, with uh, erroneous information, uh, probably not real patients, just to get the government kickback money. Um, yeah, who would think a cock pump company uh, wouldn't be on the up and up when it comes to their finances? So to speak. Uh, so to speak. But uh, that's just another one of these things, like you said, with the old people and they're, they're living longer and you've got to uh, cater to them. Well, plus they're suckers, too. So you ah, sucker. Just... You could just get, yeah. <laughs> you could get them to buy whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, this will make your life safer. It is amazing. When I found out how much money in fraud they'd made, I was like, well, wow, they, that's a lot of Postivax. That how much was it? Going out. It's like hundreds of thousands of Postivax. Wow. Who's people buying them? are up there. People are buying this shit. If you can't get a rod, you know, if you could get a rod, you watch the Postivac commercial and you laugh your ass off. It's of stupid. If you're sitting there with fucking, you know a piece of limp fucking roast beef uh, hanging <laughs> from your zipper, uh, you're probably thinking, I might, I might get that. Yeah, but it seems so much more pesky than it just does taking see, that little pill. It does seem pesky to have to s slide that over your dick and start pumping like a, a flat, l little flat tire. Yeah. Well, it's good for people who have heart problems because they can't take Viagra. Oh. There's a lot of people who have health issues that Viagra is bad for and oh. Cialis. I think they say if you're like taking heart medication, you should. There's something that you yeah. shouldn't take with it, so that's mm. probably what it is. Probably. So you got to sit there and pump your dick up. Yeah. Pump your dick up. <laughs> oh, that would be a funny song parody. Yeah. Posty Vac. Pump my dick up. Dun, dun, dun. Pump my dick up. By the way, yeah. you just had, you just right there was enough for us to do a song parody. That's, that's all right the there. lyrics of the song. Yeah, that's all you need. <laughs> so we're going to just do Auto it. Auto tune it. Yeah. It's done. I'm sure, Drew Boogie put that together. Oh, Anthony, yeah. pump my dick up. Pump my dick up. Postivac. Why is the Postivac? Dun, 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 dun. Pump my dick up. All right. Postivac. Ugh. <laughs> I'm always angry in those songs. You really are. <laughs> I still I think why. you should talk lyrically. Oh, make, right. make it easier. Yeah, yeah, just speak lyrically. <laughs> I'm always angry because I'm always angry. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> probably, painting you accurately. Probably, yeah. I'm being told uh, 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 it sucks the dick up. It doesn't pump the dick up. I, look, uh. they don't call it a penis suck. They call it a penis pump. Yeah. Because you're pumping your dick up. I really want to try one. I guarantee mm. it's going to feel awful. I won't like it. Really? Yeah, I won't like it. Aren't those uh, typically masturbation machines like the dick pump? They, they were always uh, posed in the, in the back of those magazines as a penis enlarger. Like you'd sit there and if you pump your dick every day, right. it would kind of stretch it out and make it bigger. For jacking off. Yeah. What, yeah, yeah. What's this for? Jacking off. Uh, but, but, I don't know, it seems like it's a beat-off machine. Um, I don't know if it's the same thing. I wonder, does the air get sucked out of the thing? Is that how it works? Like, it sucks all the air out and then pulls your dick? Because they have those, like, a lot of guys send me these videos, like, they know that I like big pussies and clits. Oh. oh. So they send me these really puffy clits, but yeah. they've been vacuum pumped, which don't turn me on. No, they take a big thing that looks like a respirator mask yeah. to your face. <laughs> an apnea and they, mask. Yeah, an apnea <laughs> mask. <laughs> and they shove it over the uh, vagina, and then they suck the air out, Ugh. and it kind of pulls it. It's like you ever take those, you know those balloons that you make balloon animals with? Sure. And then the little tail at the top? If you put that in your mouth and suck the air out, it's going to get bigger. That's the same so principle. Oh, yeah, that's a... Uh, oh, God, that's disgusting. It just doesn't do it for me because it's not naturally fat. I mean... It's it like looks a, like it was in the fucking ring with Tyson back in the 90s. Yeah, it's all flubby. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a big fucking swollen eyeball. That does nothing for me. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to be more for you. 
It's supposed to be for her. Really? Well, guys that send me those, those <laughs> videos. pleasure. Because they know I like big pussies. I'll get those all the time. I'm like, no, that's not what I like. I like a naturally big vagina, not one that's been pumped. God's gift. God's uh, gift. Yeah. Not a, a pumped up fucking uh, fake puss. I don't like mechanisms and, and, right. and things like that. Like when you see that mask thing on her pumping it up with a machine, like all that shit, latex stuff. You ever see that kinky shit where the guy's laying in this bed of latex and he wears, he puts like a straw in his mouth and they suck every bit of air out and he's trapped in, in a latex sandwich, unable to move. And, and the broad, like, fucking smacks his cock and shit and, yeah. and tweaks him, but he can't move. How the fuck is that not the most hor horrifying thing? Mummification. And claustrophobic. Yeah, yeah mummification, you huh? You breathe in it? Yeah, they little straw. You breathe straw. through a straw, but what if they put their thumb over the straw? They do, breath control. Oh, my uh. God, that's frightening. I don't I, like I'd love that to at interview all. a dominatrix about that because I, I'm fascinated with I can't comprehend how anybody could get off on that. But no. guys love it. No. They want to be wrapped up in, in either saran wrap no, or fucking no. plastic. There was one story I read a couple years ago. I had claustrophobic even thinking about it. It was like two guys met on the internet. And it was like they were thinking about charging the guy with murder. We might have even talked about it here. Mm. And, and they, the one, they were into like this mummification stuff. And the one guy was mummified and he put it, the other guy in his closet. And the guy suffocated the oh, middle of the night. Oh, man. Just left him there all night in his closet. Oh, imagine how hard he was trying to breathe. Oh, fuck, dude. Oh, I can't take I that. I don't get that. Do you think he was turned on like the entire, even as he was dying? No. Oh, yeah, he's just like, this is great. I'm, I can't breathe, but fuck. I'm it's the coming. ultimate. He's just pumping load after load out into his plastic bag clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, there has to be a moment where you're like, this is just not cool. <laughs> I'm yeah, dying. Yeah. Oh, God. I need to be able to breathe. Do you know the woman we interviewed, um, Jade Vixen, Asian girl who was kidnapped by the right. fucking her oh, sub? Oh, right. She had, I believe it was another boyfriend after that die who was practicing mummification Jeez, on him. Jeez, man, what the fuck? We, maybe we can look that up. Uh, Jade Vixen, uh, boyfriend, and not the sub that took her hostage and then shot himself, but after that, I think it was a guy she was dating. What a wacky lifestyle. Who fucking suffocated. He was wearing, like, le like, like uh, rubber goods or something. I try not to uh, involve myself in anything sexually that could uh, kill you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that autoerotic asphyxiation, shit like that. I, I really don't get that. I don't even get the choking thing. I know people do. I know chicks dig it and shit like that. Sometimes they lean on their fucking throat with that. But why is that? Is it... Is it a rape fantasy thing? <sighs> Total submit. I've had it in my life yeah. lightly. Like, I'm not big on my neck being fucked with. But uh, I've had my neck squeezed, and I can I can get into it, but it's it's not a fetish for me. Just in the moment, it can be hot. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, her real name is Edith Ma M A A. Wow, what a weird name. That's not quite as sexy, Edith. Whose lawyer boyfriend was shot and killed three years ago by a crazed client. Just found her newest beau dead in the attic. Okay. Man. The she, Black Widow here. She's a former PhD student turned uh, s and model, better known as Jade Vixen Wright. Made the horrific discovery, I guess it's last year, a couple years ago. He's an engineer who's based, based on online photos, seemed to share her kinky interests. He was testing new scuba equipment when he died, according to a police report. Scuba equipment? No foul play is suspected. Uh, he was a heavy rubber fetishist, said a source close to the couple, who said Ma, a new New York native, specialized in oxygen deprivation. Holy shit. She could not be reached for comment. Wow. I, I wonder if she, because uh, oh, she's a cool man. girl when she was in. We should talk to Lainey and see if we can get her in or on the phone. But I would love to, unless she won't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, only to talk about this shit. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to talk about this rubber good shit. I don't get the attraction to what guys get off. Like, what do you, no. do you jerk a guy off while he's like that? Does he? Yeah, and he's like fucking trying to breathe. But was she, no, the... she wasn't involved with that. She just found him dead. I yeah. found him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's, a, she's an oxygen deprivation specialist. And he died of oxygen deprivation. And he's yeah. a rubber goods and... Wow, yeah. when is that Tyson clip from? Sorry. Oh, that's, that's Spike Lee yeah. to direct Mike Tyson's Broadway debut. Wait, did we try to get him in? We just can't get him in. He's not doing. He's not up here at all. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I mean, would we love have... to talk to him. That's the clip I think that's going around. He was on the Today Show yesterday. Oh yes, sir. Because yeah, he's doing. You know, he did. He started doing a one-man show, Tyson. Oh, he is. Yeah, Got he started. He's just about his life. And um, is he doing that on Broadway? 
Yeah, now he's coming to Broadway with it. I think he's just doing like a week or something, though. And Spike in Lee. August. Oh. In August, he's doing it. Him and fucking Spike. I would love to talk to Mike Tyson, man. And Spike Lee's directing it. Uh, win me a Tony Award. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Holy oh, okay, shit. Okay, so oh, that's a clip from the They're showing it on IMAX. He sure still looks fucking dangerous. But look at why, why do they take up so much? I don't need today exclusive. It's half the screen now. It's half the screen. What the fuck are they doing? It's taken up with fucking drivel graphics. Holy mackerel. That's insane. That's what Spike Lee. Spike Lee just looks weird. He's this looking fucking... funny these days. Yeah. Oh, I, I love Spike. Even though Spike Lee is like really kind of radical and he irritates people, I just yeah. I love him. He really is irritating. Yeah, I know. Tyson said he was inspired by Chaz Palminteri doing a Bronx Tale. Oh, by himself, man show. Yeah. A Bronx Tale. And then Tyson <laughs> was like, oh, i got to get involved in this. I'm inspired by Rich Voss's appearance with a Bronx <laughs> Tale. <laughs> oh, God. Wow, he is a fucking... He looks he's like he's having fun, though, man. Devastating well, looking he motherfucker. He's talking about prostitutes there. Yeah, he's oh, probably really? talking about rape. He's just having fun. He's laughing. You want to hear the um, Yeah, it's just going to make me love Tyson. Yeah. yeah. I just love Mike Tyson. He, I just want to hang out with him. He is great. The times I've met him, he's been great, man. Yeah. There may be, I think I told you that, there may be video of he and I kissing the same girl in Vegas. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, right. Wink, wink. Wink, wink, girl. <laughs> Not at the same time. <laughs> no. Did Tyson, you think he's into that? I don't know. No, I, don't, I, I don't know if he knew because it was public. In front of a lot of people. How do you not know? Oh, you know, with Vanity, it's hard not to. I to. saw that picture of Vanity. I wouldn't know. You might not in that moment, that crazy moment at the porn convention on the expo floor. Yeah? You might not, dude. I don't know. Now you might. I see. But, um, oh, come on. That looks like one of those trannies. <laughs> big, right, big exactly. Dick, wait, big wait a minute. Pick. Wait a minute. Her eyes? No, but when you see her face, you see her interact. You could... If you're not looking for it, if you're not thinking, if you just like... I'm always looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. That's a kind of, Is that... A, is that... Ah, uh, there's something... Well, I Don't forget I know you also now. know. Now I know. And she's 40, I think. Uh, I think she's not that old, but she's in her late 30s. Oh, she's Jesus. not, like, young anymore. What a thick body. <laughs> yeah. She, <laughs> That's she, a manly chest. <laughs> look wow. Look at the picture down there. Like, you might be able to tell with some of these, but uh, she's yeah, one of the more passable. But anyway, I, you know, mm. uh, a lot of people didn't know. Yeah, that's a man face right there. You think? Looks like um, if Kim Kardashian's brother had a brother and <laughs> fucking dressed up like a woman. I'm going to turn in on the transsexuals. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm going to. You know what? I don't think I'm so. Not. I'm going to try. Uh, or I'll die trying. <laughs> look, I can, I can appreciate ones that, uh, you know, look the part. It's not all that uh, crazy to say, all right, that looks like a woman. But that really doesn't. Th and they usually always have some little tinge of manliness in their, in their face. Oh, I no, no, I, I, I agree. And the voice uh, is is fine with Bailey. It's not uh, this crazy, but there's just something there. And I, I, I know you can't really be objective when you know. I had lunch with her and her husband last week. How did that go? It's fine. We just met for lunch. It was yeah. like literally just the three of us sat down and just bullshit. We just all eat sausage without chewing. <laughs> 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 Slide it down. I like pelicans. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and all he is at the table doing that, <laughs> just getting getting looks from the other tables, <laughs> laughing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, we didn't do that, but I wish we had. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, oh, well, that face is kind of um, feminine. She said she's had no work done whatsoever. Who is that? Who is that one? I was trying to find. Uh... That kind of looks like a chick. Good ones. Blonde. It might be photoshopped too. Sometimes it could be. I don't know. Something. Wow, that's uh, yeah, you know, some of the that's some uh, Facebook magic right there, where she's looking up at the camera. Yeah. That elevated view. What does that fucking view do to girls? I don't know, where, man. When the camera is up high and they're looking up, it makes their eyes. <laughs> what that's wonderful got website is this? Jumped into. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, there's some. Uh, there's some fucking attractive ones on this site. Oh. Come on, that wasn't one. Go back. That? That's I a dude? I think you might be surprised. What the f oh. Holy shit. All oh. right, their faces are kind of looking very girly-like. Someone's changing their tune quicker than I expected <laughs> them to. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sounding a little too excited I here. I didn't expect my victory to be so... <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm just extremely surprised at the amount of uh, trannies that, that have girly faces. Yeah. It's uh, fucked up. Well, a lot of them do. Well, all right, that's a dude. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> it's like my Uncle like Joe. It's like Sebastian Bach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus. That doesn't even look like yeah, that. I'll find some make the site. What site is this? Let's give them a plug out. best dash shemales dash ever dot tumblr dot com. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. It's amazing how many websites I don't know about. Yeah, right? Well Danny seems to have found one that has uh, a lot of uh ones that kind of look like I don't fuck around when I come to my shemales. No. Yeah, like that one on the left you can tell. There's one there that's got kind of I wish oh, I had god. I wish I had her pecs. What a little oh. dick. Oh god, he was made up one. <laughs> oh, Jesus it's very funny, but that's that's how you know Anthony's about to take the plunge because he went, "Ugh, what a little dick!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do I want? A nice fucking yeah. plump one yeah. on these uh, shemales? Yeah. What the fuck? A fucking size queen. Come on, you piece of shit! <laughs> I, I I turned into in one fucking minute yeah. from being like uh, to a size queen. I don't think so. Oh, come on! Look at her cheekbones. Where's the cock for Pete's sake? Wow! All right, that was the fastest fucking about face I've ever seen. Yeah, what the fuck? Um, what were we just talking about? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Um, what did we start talking about? Tyson? Oh, Tyson, but before yes, then. Yes, yes, yes. Um, oh, we're talking about Vanity, okay. And but before then? <laughs> How about before then? Before we said good Tyson. morning. No, I, I didn't, we, uh... Penis pumps? <laughs> Penis pumps, yeah, the plastic vac. Old people, plastic okay. vac. Stupid old people. And, uh... Yeah, how they smell. Ugh. I found a fucking <laughs> chick online who I thought of Anthony. She's, uh... Oh. She had braces in a lot of her porn. She's really... Michelle Lynn, did I ever show you her? I don't think so. Uh, you know who she is, Danny? Michelle <laughs> Lynn. She's kind of uh, hot. And she does a lot of videos with braces. I think she took them off, though. Like, she's probably 25. Yeah, her teeth are probably straight by now. I mean, you'd hope not, though, because <laughs> with braces, she was really sexy. Was it? Yeah, but I've thought of you so many times when I've seen her. I'm like, she, you would love this fucking I'm chick. I'm not really big on the braces. Oh, so. you're not? No, no. That's, uh, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> well, she's, you know... Yeah. She's well, fucking... See. She looks good with them. I'm not, I don't like braces either. Yeah. They don't do anything for me, but with her... They're hot on the legs. <laughs> <laughs> I like a good polio fuck. <laughs> yeah, really. I like, I like to rip them off like Forrest Gump's shoes when he runs quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that and fucking in an iron lung. <laughs> Some ancient diseases. <laughs> what was that movie about All the... Right, okay. uh, yeah, she's yeah, a dirty little girl. Kind she's of filthy. She plays with her pussy and she just she jerks her boyfriend off through his pants. Really? And she doesn't do anything hardcore. She makes tease videos. That's adorable. Yeah, she's kind of a cool... She's cool. All yeah, right. Yeah, might uh, might have to uh, search uh, out some videos. Yeah, I think I, I think you're going to be back on the site Danny just had. <laughs> yeah, what was that? No, I'm just curious again. I'm by curious. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's a great site right there. What this one? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, the uh, the tranny uh, tranny awesome. site. But they, they, you know, I'm just I'll say it. Yeah, they, you know, they don't look bad. I've seen ones that look a lot fucking worse on. Sure. Uh, I know the intertubes. Sure. Mm. It's amazing how much free porn you get. It's amazing. Kind of hard, it's kind of hard to pay for it. Um, Who pays for it? That's I still do. No way. Uh, oh, Jimmy. I don't like to steal. Jim, it's not stealing when it's just on, you know, those those tube sites. How do they make money, though? Like, I'd love to know in porn. How do they fucking make money anymore? I don't it's even almost impossible. Know. You, I don't know. Most people don't want to put on their credit cards. You married guys got to go out there and just find it for free. And Bob Kelly, when he turned me on to that mega site, it's like, you don't need to go anywhere else. Is that it? Yeah, Clitty.com. I mean, there's just Clitty.com? Yeah. There may be. I, there's I've probably still, uh, like, a certain sect of people, like, guys that have to go to adult bookstores and stuff like that because their wives don't want them watching or they can't have it in their internet history yeah. or whatever it is. I'll bet there is. But sure. what is, why does that make you pay for it instead of... Because you can't look at it on your computer because you don't want to get caught. I mean, but like pay sites. Like who's going to a pay internet site? I don't know who would go to a pay site. I could see it's buying crazy. physical DVDs. Physical DVDs? Oh. If you don't want to get caught. I haven't bought a DVD oh, in no. a long time, man. Like a porn DVD? I threw mine out recently. I, it was really hard to do, uh, but I threw out probably close to a thousand DVDs. Wow! You, you go to pay wow. sites though. Maybe occasionally I'll buy on clipsforsale.com dot com if there's one I want to see. <coughs> like what? what? I had thrown out. You can't I, find it. I'm on... not exaggerating when I say a thousand DVDs. Like Yoshi used to send them to me all the time mm. for Evil Angel, and I, you know, again, I would watch a right. lot of them. 
And I felt weird. Like, I wanted to hoard them, but it's like, no, you don't need to. Everything here is on. You know what's hard for me to throw out with porn? Some of my old videotapes that I know are kind of hard to get. Like, like VHS? A, yeah, there's a few of them. I just want to transfer them and get rid of them because Classic. there's no reason to have them. You want to uh, pawn these or sell them? Or what are you looking to do with these pornos? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to have viewing parties and charge people <laughs> hand out Kleenex. Yeah, I, I don't, uh, I haven't used a DVD or, or shit in, in years, especially with a porno. It's like, and, and with VCR, uh, with a video, there was always a checklist, a post-ejaculation checklist, because you'd, you'd get so disinterested with it after you came that sometimes you'd forget to take it out of the fucking VCR, and yeah. you're just done. It's like, okay, I'm done. I don't want to think about what I, the filth I just committed upon myself. So uh, you'd forget to take it out of the VCR, and that could be awkward, depending on who's coming over. So I think it's a lot easier to go online, even if you're, you don't want your wife to see it, yeah. than it is to take the chance of having physical porn in your house when the wives find that thing. Ugh. What, is, what is this? You don't find me attractive. What does she have that I uh, don't? You know? Uh. I loved reading those fucking letters in the Q&A sections of magazines and whatnot when, when they're, t they're trying to ask somebody, like, what does it mean if my husband gets porn? I found a stockpile of pornography. Does he not want me anymore? Exactly. Yeah. You're like the... Like the actual um, uh, the the meat and 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 lubrication, but uh, he's thinking about other things. <laughs> yeah, how about you join in and blow him while he's watching right. it, or or, oh. or take part of it? That's how we women mess up. It's mm. like guys are garbage, but we wouldn't mind sharing most of the perversion with you. Like one one woman told me her wife her husband was jerking off, and he's a buddy of mine. She's like he's jerking off and he won't uh, let me do it with him or play with him while he does it. And like. He's watching porn, and she gets so mad at him. But I'm yeah. like, that's because he's watching something he doesn't want you to know about. Yeah. So like, and I wasn't ratting on him. I'm like, so just be dirty, and tell him it's okay. Whatever he's jerking off to, I'm um, gonna you know, hopefully it's not something terrible. Yep. And um, fucking just join in. You ever have a, a, a situation where you're just sitting back and you're going, "This is fantastic," and this girl is great. Uh, one one time, I had a, a nice cold drink in my hand. Uh, watching the Yankees in the World Series on television, of course. I wasn't at the park. While getting, <laughs> while getting a blowjob. And I'm just watching the game. And From Billy Martin. Blow <laughs> 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 just watching the game, getting a blowjob. And, and sometimes it just makes you go like, now this is like the best thing. Yeah. It's like got all the features. <laughs> One of my friends, the morning of my wedding, we went out to lunch or something. And he, he made the announcement that this may be the greatest day of his life because this morning he was watching Harry Potter and he started getting blown at the same time. <laughs> Whoa, okay, that's a little weird. <laughs> it's like, Harry yeah. Potter? And he's like, yeah. yeah. I got blown to Tales from the Crypt once. Uh, that's a good Tales one. Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. I got blown from, uh, to uh, Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Which but I, I had to make cool. I had to like hold back because I wanted to watch the the episode. I was so into it. Right. I couldn't I couldn't release until it was over. <laughs> you got to be careful. You don't uh, completely lose interest. Take that blowjob for granted and start really getting into the story. And she's gonna feel it. Maybe you know. It was deflate. the San, it was the Santa Claus story. Ah, uh, that's great. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. That's I could never get... fire poker to the head. Ah, <laughs> uh, I think is that the one. It was where, where the guy from? I think the guy from Night Court played. Oh, oh, that yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. He was like outside, or the call. It was one of those the calls coming from the inside sort of situation. The crazy Santa Claus came yeah. to the door, and didn't the kid open up the yeah, door? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Santa's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is, no. you, you remember more details about the episode <laughs> oh, than you do about the blowjob. <laughs> about job. the blowjob. Well, yeah, that was a classic episode. <laughs> I understand. What were you going to remember? Yeah, and then she went down the side of it. Yeah. <laughs> then she was sucking my balls. I got blown <laughs> once to the woodsman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was sex here. The woodsman. <laughs> I couldn't concentrate, man. I, I can only do one thing at a time. I can't, yeah. I, nah, I can't get my dick sucked and watch TV at the same time. I, I kind of like Unless having... Oz. A, oh, yeah, oh, of course. Oz and yeah. the fucking dicks. I, I like having the uh, TV on. Some type of... Because it's, a, it's kind of a weird light. I like having a weird light on in the room like that. And then uh, a little bit of sound so you don't just... Kind of feel like you're making dumb noises, uh, so I kind of do like that. But you can't really pay attention to the to the movie. Yeah. Although there have been times I've been known I've been known to uh, move my head like I'm trying to make a sexy move, but it's just to catch a cool part in the movie that's on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry.
It happens. But you don't get thrown off by any of the weird voices in the movies that you it's, don't expect? Yeah, it's happened before yeah. where I have gotten thrown off. I've paid a little too much attention to the movie, and uh, performance uh, was a lackluster. Well, TV is terrible, because like, yeah. if you, like, I always have either like History or Discovery Channel on my uh, house, so it's like you don't really want to get stuff going on, and then <laughs> Pawn Stars comes on, you know, because then you start, you start hearing what these people are bringing in, and you're like, hmm, what? Yeah. Oh, An 18th it. century what? <laughs> I bet he's going to offer 800 Bucks. Anthony getting blown, and he just hears Edward Norton yelling at somebody to bite the curb. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that would... He comes immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yes. With his pants. Much harder. <laughs> and she's taking it out. <laughs> He's, yeah. he's giving him that fucking the kite speech and fucking Elliot Gould. Not welcome. <laughs> yeah, you see what this? You see, know what this means? Not welcome. Oh, well. Wait, did he mm. cock block his mother? What did he say? You think I'm going to let some Jew oh. fuck my mother? Some yeah, kike? Oh, he's, he's using sh that. Yeah. Shylock nose I'll or something like cut that. Cut off your Shylock nose yeah. and shove it up your fucking ass. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was great in that. What an uncomfortable dinner <laughs> that yeah. was. He's shoving the meat in his vegetarian sister's mouth. Because yeah. He went, yeah. Yeah, eat it. Eat, fucking eat it. Oh, At was, dinner? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that started like the real going downhill. And then he well, went to jail. Yeah. Well, he got fucked in the ass. Oh, yeah, he did. That was a great fucking. I just uh, didn't like that part of it. Like, I didn't either. Because I'll tell you why. Because they had to, they had to PC it up in a way for Hollywood. Like, oh yeah. look, the white supremacist gets his comeuppance. Yeah, by the gets, white guys. And he gets fucked in the like. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's like, did you have to go that way with this? Couldn't you find? Have you? Couldn't he find redemption some other way? He made friends with the black guy who wound up saving his life in the prison. Uh, and uh, the white guys turned on him, and the white guys fucked him in the ass. Uh, I don't know. I don't see that. That's Pizarro prison. The best fucking <laughs> look is Edward Norton glaring at Elliot Gould as he talks. Oh, when Elliot Gould asked him a question like, do you really think that's the way things should be? Or He asked him something, and, and Edward Norton looked up at him and kind of made a, hmm? Eh? It was something about the huh? Rodney King thing. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So you think he deserved it? He something. deserved it, and it's like, huh? Eh? And he's looking like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and be that, careful. That made Elliot Gould go like, oh, boy. Yeah, be oh, boy. He was so good in this, though. He really... This was one of Edward Norton's uh, best roles as far as his uh, acting goes, I, I do believe. White people too. Oh. Yeah, they're not offing each other in record numbers all over America. Look at the statistics, for Christ's sakes. It's one... <laughs> Hold on, Dave. Turn, turn, uh, turn Anthony's mic off. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear the movie. <laughs> 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 yeah. There's a commitment to crime. Uh, Not only that, they're proud of it. I love her. Well, Feruza. Who is she? Feruza Balk. She likes yeah. Feruza oh Balk. God, I love her. She might want to take a look at the social inequalities that produce them. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. You know what? That's exactly what I hate. Because what you're doing, Davina, is taking one thing and calling it something else and just, you know, alleviating the responsibility that these people have. Exactly. To oh, what? You know, it's like saying, Chiming it's in. not a riot. It's rage. I do it's like that Aunt can watch this movie and Edward Norton would be like, well, that part's okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. I will, yeah, yeah. I will say one thing they did in this that I liked uh, is they, they made the dialogue, like, they gave him good arguments. Like, he wasn't just an irrational right. asshole. Like, when you watch this, you go, well, that's a great point that he's making. <laughs> they, they kind of give him some kind of a fucking... Yes. ...a humanity that makes sense. He's not just a total... You can understand why an intelligent person would fall into it. Yeah, absolutely. He attacked police officers. That's the bottom line. And he walked. Yeah, and there's some Yahoo there with a video camera who turned it on halfway through so that all we see is them hitting him. Exactly. You know, you got your pal and coon winding up and cracking him with billy clubs and Bersenio kicking him in the back of the skull. So it looks severe, you know? And people are going, oh, this poor guy. This ah, and they show the little brother guy. being influenced. Yeah, it's the in home. On the stand defending themselves for using absolutely standard textbook self-defense procedures. There you go. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> 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 All we need to do is to have fucking Bobo interrupt this fucking <laughs> dinner with a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was totally appropriate. I think they're in a better position to make that judgment call than you are. In fact, we as society grant cops a certain amount of authority. It's totally knowledge that their job is difficult right. and dangerous. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, very few people like. Respect that. Respect that authority. Look who's talking about respect here, Mr. Mm. Junior KKK. Huh? What? Hey, 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 what? No, I don't want to go to college, Derek. Davina. You should learn to listen. Derek. Okay? Derek. I acknowledge a cop's authority. I don't respect any laws that let monkeys like Rodney King back on the street. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the dinner turns a <laughs> lot. <laughs> yeah. 
disorganized bunch of rednecks like the fucking KKK. Please. <laughs> so take your head out of your ass. I mean, you've gotten off the point. <laughs> this girlfriend's cracking up. Yeah. At his... I had a point. He's I hilarious. A point. I... Do you have one? What is your point, Derek? All right. Think about this. Think about this. If Danny had been walking across the street that night and Rodney King had plowed into Can him... Can we just drop this Rodney King thing? <laughs> drop him in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh-oh. Elliot Gould. Why would she bring him home for dinner? I know. <laughs> Bad idea. I would like some dessert. Oh, so look at her trying to just keep the dinner together. I would like together. some dessert. I would like to just... Uh, what do you want? The swastika cookies? <laughs> yes, before my skinhead son hits my Jewish boyfriend <laughs> and my liberal cunt daughter, I would like to have a little dessert, dessert, dessert. <laughs> just trying to hold things together. <clears throat> what the fuck? She knows the son's got a giant swastika tattoo on his chest. Yet, she brings home a Jewish guy. That was a terrible decision. Very bad decision on part of mom. But then again, when you look, she's still smoking with bloody fucking cough lungs. <laughs> That's Beverly so, D'Angelo, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. what a set of tits on her. She was lovely, right? <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she wasn't afraid to do topless uh, back in the day, too. And she, she had ample uh, melons. Mm -hmm. Very, very full uh, breast disease. And uh, Feruza, yeah. Jesus, look weird. at the fucking fifth picture in. What a giant mouth. She has that big fucking mouth and those uh, those wacky teeth. Danny, top one, five people in. Mm. Two, three. Look at the fucking yeah. choppers wow, on the her. Go Holy shit. All right. Is that her? Let yeah. me see that. Giant mouth. That's not her real like gums. That's got to be her fucking goof. No, that's really her. What giant fucking gums. She's known for that. That's too big. For that. She's got a pretty pretty lips, but her fucking gums are massive. Well, when she smiles like that, it's terrible. But I think when she just puts on regular mouth, she she don't look too bad. I would never ever tell jokes around her. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, like, just horrible, depressing stories. Like every time she's like, "Guess what happened to me today?" I'd be like, "Hold on, I just read that a baby died." <laughs> yeah, <Aww>. you know. <laughs> I would never want to see her happy. She probably doesn't look very good now, right? How old is she? Oh man. That's a pretty good uh, shot. Like, I know who she is because of that movie, but I don't know her yeah. name. She's on the convention circuit now. Oh, is that what she's oh, doing? Mm -hmm. So we could probably meet her at Comical Con. Oh, that's maybe. right. She's very gothy looking in the old days. She's probably married, though. <clears throat> what does that matter? That's close. Like, that you don't have a year. shot? Oh, oh, that was last Joker. year? She looks yeah. good. How old is she, like 34? Uh, Why am I now obsessed with her bio? Trendy. She cancer? Capricorn? Born <laughs> in, uh, let's see, 74. So wow, 30, she's older than that. Wow. Yeah, okay. 38. Jesus. 38? Yeah. Mm. Okay, she's hot as fuck. You still, uh... Oh, yeah. Found that? Kidding me? Well, for the story, too. I'd fuck her. Yeah. I got a full rod right now. I never really <laughs> read any stories about her fucking or no scandals nah, or anything with her. So. She seems the type that would have that, you know? Then then she doesn't. Mm. Not bad. Alec Baldwin is my favorite personal life. Yes. Oh, I really, oh. I know he's an obnoxious prick, but I fucking love this dude. He's a tough guy. I find him uh, hypocritical, too, many times. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, how could you not just enjoy him as a person, as a miserable yelling man? <laughs> Just hatred in his heart. He fucking just can't get enough of screaming. And these photographers yeah. are fucking cocksuck. Like they're the same ones that blocked you that day. Like that's yeah, yeah. These paparazzi pieces of shit, and he just hates them, and he can't hide it. What a great shot! It shows uh, Alec Baldwin charging at the photographer with a face like "fuck you, man." Like like he he's he's got a tough guy face, and the photographer looks like this. <laughs> he's just he's he's bent over backwards. Like he's trying to get away from him. His camera's flailing. <laughs> I believe that he didn't punch. The, he said that punch was never he thrown. Punch. They I always don't... say that. If, if the guy's hand touches him, he was punched. Guarantee there's a lawsuit. They all want you to hit them so they can sue you. It is considered assault, I do believe. Oh, of course it is. If yeah. you even touch them. I think, I think there's even a battery, where you, a type of battery where you don't even have to touch somebody. It's a weird fucking thing. If you kind scream of in their face? Thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Front page of the Daily News. Yeah, that's a big one. And then he, uh, so he did that out on Park Avenue, was it? On Park Avenue. Is that what that was? Yeah, I believe so. And then he uh, took a sheet from the hotel he was staying in and covered himself with a sheet or a blanket and walked down the street the rest of the way until he got to his car uh, with a sheet over his head. Really? <laughs> Looking like a complete lunatic. <laughs> Are there no photos of that? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah, that. 
That's how he walked down the street the rest of the way so the photographers wouldn't really get his picture. He had a wow. hotel sheet over his head walking to his uh, car <laughs> with his assistant holding his suit and uh, various uh, paperwork his for him. suit? Where's his suit? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's a fucking uh, rough job to be Alec Baldwin's assistant. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, put out a few fires, I believe. I never met him. We said hello at a Paul McCartney concert. Like, I don't think I don't think he knows me. I just I said hi to him as a fan at uh, the uh, Apollo. Or? Yeah, one, one of those <clears throat> two shows. Oh, and uh, I, that's my only interaction with him has been just seeing him there. So I don't know what he's like as a guy. Judah Friedlander loves him though. He's, he works really. For him. Yeah, so he's great. Yeah. Well, if you're a guy and you're hanging out with him and stuff, uh, I'm sure that's no problem. But. Uh, you know, if you're a photographer or his ex-wife, <laughs> I made an ass. No, you've made an ass. <laughs> no, I've made an yeah, ass. Ass. E Rock, do we myself. have that? Why don't we have that, E Rock? Why don't oh, we, we have should that? have that one. That's a that's a great clip. Oh man, Ugh. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he uh, he's been uh, he's been in the news a few times, uh, saying some shit that's gotten him in trouble. And I can't. I guess he gave up on his Twitter. But then he went. Ba didn't he go back? Then he went on back, it? but it was never as, never as big as when he first started. Because he was saying some shit. He is, he's just volatile on there with his lib talk. <laughs> oh, here it is. Alec Baldwin phone called a daughter. Hey, I want to tell you something, okay? And I want to leave a message for you right now. Because again, it's ten thirty here in New York on a Wednesday, and once again, I made an ass of myself trying to get to a phone to call you at a specific time. When the time comes for me to make the phone call, I stop whatever I'm doing, and I go when I make that phone call at 11 o'clock in the morning in New York, and if you don't pick up the phone at 10 o'clock at night, and you don't even have that goddamn phone turned on, I want you to know something, okay? I, I'm tired of playing this game with you. I'm leaving this message with you to tell you you have insulted me for the last time. You have insulted me. You don't have the brains or the decency as a human being. I don't give a damn that you're 12 years old. Or <laughs> That's the best. Or that you're a child or that your mother is a full of a pain in the ass or doesn't care about what you do as far as I'm concerned. You have humiliated me for the last time with this phone. And when I come out there next week, I'm going to fly out there for the day. Like, yeah, I know you're 12. It's like he was talking to a, a grown woman. I know. Just lambasting her. And the only line that makes him look awful is, you're a little pig. Yeah, like, yeah. Up until yeah. then, he's fine. Just a parent yelling. And he's like, ugh. Yeah. Well, but bad, he was that cunt ex-wife of his. Bad-mouthing the, the ex-wife to the kid. But That's you know, she good. does it, too. And she wanted so much money from him, probably in a divorce. Yeah, yeah. Because he was fighting all that divorce stuff. And uh, Kim Bassinger has fucking money. Yeah, yeah. She's not, maybe not as much as him, but she's not some poor house fucking broke woman i love how his south shore long island trash fucking accent comes out when he's yelling on the phone though i'm gonna be in new york he doesn't sound like he does when he's uh doing his nice deep uh, announcer voice in commercials <laughs> but when he was doing that all i'm hearing is uh, fucking uh, the guy from glenn gary glenn ross oh man yeah, yeah yeah that's a fucking great movie put that coffee down <laughs> you think i'm fucking with you i am not fucking with you that's he a, was best cameo ever rick and that was pretty much him, I guess. Yeah. He had to just play himself and yeah. not a stretch. He really was a mean asshole in what that film. fucking bastard. <laughs> Should we take a little break and eat? Yeah, we got our food here. Yay!
Harvey Weinstein is into that. I'm very happy at 9.30. Yes. I'm just getting a text. I think Mike Baker's coming in today. Oh, is he? He's oh, not on the list. Oh, well. Yeah, Roland just texted me. Wow. What Mike. time is he coming? Mike. I think like 8 o'clock. Oh, okay. That's cool. Okay. Tell some fucking secret agent stories. <laughs> All right. We'll uh, eat and uh, return. Yeah. Sirius XM. You're listening to Obi and Anthony. Whether or not you're paying attention is another question. <laughs> Ah, good morning, sexy. What's this about? It's just a rejoinder. <laughs> you didn't say good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> yeah, it's just a rejoinder. Uh, hi, welcome. Welcome back. Um, what the hell do I want to hit on? Hold on. Oh, oh, the uh, what the fuck was going out uh, on out in the hallway? Because uh, all I saw. I saw our ha the handsome intern. With the webbed toes. With the webbed toes that ruins his handsomeness. Yeah, definitely. Um, dancing. I, I, now, I couldn't hear anything. I just was looking through the glass, and I saw him dancing. Well, I, I, and, and, of course, it was right after Sam walked out the door. So I only assume you, again, treating the um, interns like your personal little puppets <laughs> and toys around no. this place. What were you having him do? I didn't even ask. Well... He said, uh, uh, Dr. I asked her, Dr. Pepper, and he said, it makes the world taste better. And I go, is that even the catchphrase? Is that the slogan? I don't, I don't uh, know that that's I, the slogan. I stopped uh, knowing the slogan when it was, I'm a pepper. <laughs> Be a pepper, too. And he goes, yeah, the song, Dr. Pepper. And he started singing this Dr. Pepper song and dancing and, he was and dancing snapping his fingers. And Eric, is Rob in there? He looked, um, yeah, you want him in? He looked a little retarded. Do you want to see the dance in the song? Yeah. Yeah, I want to know what the heck was all about. I like to bull up his legs while he does it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make him dance like fucking Pesci made spider dance. <laughs> yeah. Dance, you motherfucker. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Good. How are you guys? <laughs> Pretty good. I noticed he's, he's, a, he's probably the most cordial intern. Uh, I, usually, I don't know why, but when I'm walking up the hallway to uh, come here to the studio, he's walking the other way. And usually um, has a fine, how do you do? He's he doesn't avert his eyes like the other interns. He's always psyched. Yeah. He is always psyched. Yeah. Just a very happy guy. Happy to be here. Yeah, happy to be here. Happy to be anywhere. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah, and he's been much. in the office telling Eric, fuck you. <laughs> so that's funny. Has he really? Yeah. You're at the point already? <laughs> well, You're fuck youing Iraq? Well, um, like I got his way out. He's your boss. On his way out, or just pop his head back in the door and be like, Eric, fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. What the fuck? That's yeah. your boss, man. It happens a couple times, but yeah. <laughs> it's not. Blatant insubordination. Blatant, I that, mean. That everyone laughs at and everyone. finds hilarious. Iraq, you tolerate that? No. no. Oh, what but, do you do? Uh, what do you do? Do you uh, oh, I yell at him and him? everything, but then all of a sudden he'll he'll leave, and then Sam's going, go back in there, do it again. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I didn't do that. Well, I don't. Is, uh, I don't believe Sam would uh, actually do <laughs> something do like that. that. No, no. You would yeah, encourage that behavior because you? I can no. see his feet sticking out from under the photos <laughs> on on the the wall there, where Sam's just laughing in the hallway as he comes in. No, I'm goes, like, I mean, I think it's funny, but I don't. I don't encourage it. Oh, so yeah. you can see Sam's dumb long feet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awful Mad Magazine feet. I hate. Or Roland. Whispering <laughs> while he's sitting in the office with Eric. Say fuck you. <laughs> say fuck you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just say fuck you. And then Rob's over there going, No, I can't. No, I don't want. No, no. All right. Yeah. And then two seconds later, Hey, Eric, fuck you. Gives him a good fuck you. What uh, What other interns are in today? Well, there's uh, Connor. Connor. Oh, yeah. let's get. Which let's one's get the, the crazy little... guy? He's doing a. Food that's run right that's now. Kevin. He's in tomorrow. Oh. The one who's not on his Adderall because. <laughs> right. 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 Why is that Adderall? Because we wanted to see what he was like without his Adderall. He said he felt more comfortable not on his Adderall. So I said, well, you shouldn't take your Adderall. Back. I'm very surprised that we didn't have uh, the lawyers step in and say, uh, hey, you can't tell somebody to, st to stop their medication. Was, I don't think anybody's listening to the after show around here. Oh. Because we, we were probably also, get away with everything. <laughs> we right? were also fairly surprised. Why don't we push all of our bits that we want to do to the after show? Yeah. And uh, then you we'll get away with it. Act like you're leaving. And just walk right back in. We'll hang out yeah. and uh, be able to do all the fun things we've wanted to do. Yeah. Plus, who would listen medically to you anyway? Well, we like, told him yeah. to contact. We specifically said, you know, you'll probably, if you're actually going to do this, want to call your doctor and find out yeah. if that yeah. is what you should do. And Did goes, you talk to your doctor? 
he uh, he stopped taking it and got confused. Oh, he sounds was, very confused on the air. To tell you the truth, he was confused before. Beforehand. While he was taking it, too. He doesn't know what he's doing. He'll start talking and then just drop off and not finish like what he's talking about. No, and, and any question that you ask him, yeah. because he gets confused so easily, he looks at you as if you're absurdly asking this question. Yeah, he gets very agitated. Like, like it's like, hey, well, how come you didn't listen to the show today? And he's like... Whoa. Well, I, I was doing stuff. And you go, well, no. It's, first of all, that doesn't answer the question. Second yeah. of all, it wasn't an absurd question. Yeah. The, the, the worst part was he doesn't seem to want to be here or do radio. No. Like he said, he doesn't want to be in radio. He doesn't care about radio. And he's just here because it's here. Then yeah. he does kind of belong here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we should, we should him. <laughs> what is he doing here? I don't, he's not sure. He said he's, so he's trying to figure things out. He said he's confused. He said at one point he's twenty, I think. Aww. And he said earlier he did want to do radio, but now he thinks that he's not good at it. What, does he want to be a fireman or an astronaut now? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking kids! I don't know what he wants to do. Yeah. Rob, do you want to do radio? What about you? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to do something in the radio or television industry. Yeah, I bet television, right? You want, you want to do what? Yeah. Uh, radio or television? Okay. Radio. Yeah, radio. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Radio. I thought it was a slip up at first, but no, he says it like that. He's probably more cut out to just be a model than some. Oh of yeah, just probably. Abercrombie and Fitch. Yeah, yeah. just fucking. Maybe go yeah. hang out topless at the store. Yeah, do that, away. right? Yeah. Right. Spray cologne on girls, they'll giggle and take their picture with you. <laughs> yeah. How uh, many times a day do girls just walk up to you and say, "Could you fuck me, please?" <laughs> right? Happens all the time. A bunch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you do that girls do to handsome yeah, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do okay. You know, until mean. they see those feet of yours. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I forgot he's got those awful tootsies. He just keeps fucking shoes on when he goes to fuck. Yeah, <laughs> nothing rotten, on but shoes. Rotten duck feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the duck-footed stud. <laughs> Girls get thrown by that? Uh, not really. I mean, mm. it's really not noticeable unless like they stare at my feet. So it's like whatever. Yeah, maybe a little 69ing, and they look down your legs and see <laughs> yeah. those feet and just go, what the yeah. fuck? I feel like there's fucking scuba gear on. Why don't you take your, <laughs> your scuba feet off? Oh. Flippers, paint your feet blue, like fins, <laughs> swimmy fins. <laughs> so you want to do radio? Yeah, I think so. And what would you want to do in TV? Uh, anything behind the scenes, be on air. Well, well, that's a big difference. At all. <laughs> yeah, light, I would, have like, a lighting I, tech in the I, ceiling I, <laughs> cover everything. I'd like to do uh, <laughs> behind the scenes or in front of them. <laughs> well, yeah. Behind the camera, in front of it, above it, below it. Uh, the camera, inside the camera. <laughs> I'll be a mechanism of some sort. <laughs> yeah, I really did cover all ground. Yeah, yeah, he's all over the place. Well, I'm not sure yet. I mean, I want to still learn and everything like that. Uh, how old the gentleman are you? 21. Oh, 21. I remember 21, full of piss and vinegar, mm -hmm. and ready to go out and conquer the world. No, I wasn't really. I didn't care about anything. <laughs> so uh, when you see yourself, what no do you see yourself doing? None? Oh, I'm not no. sure yet. We all have, like, views of ourselves, right? Like, what, yeah. we, what we want to do. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, had, I was 21 when I started interning here. I wanted, wow. And now you're fucking like 38, 39 I'm not that old. No. Oh. That's E-Rock, I think. I thought, oh, right. <laughs> He's, right. He just turned Florida's 39. Own. Yeah. Florida's own E-Rock. Wow! So you're 21, mm -hmm. got the world by the balls. Yeah. You had a girlfriend? No, probably better off. Oh yeah. no man! Yeah. Any of the female interns talking to you? A couple. Oh, Whoa! Yes, a couple. Office romance. Whoa! A couple. Got Are a they couple pretty? digits. Yeah. Off oh, you got a couple of digits got too. Got a couple digits. Whoa! Fucking people, right? They just <laughs> yeah. walk around. Yeah, number please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, what up? I'll take oh. those digits if you don't <laughs> mind. Digits? How'd you ask for the digits? Did you, did you say, I want your number, or did she say, hey, here it is? Well, it was more like, hey, like, what's your plans this weekend? And then I was like, I don't know yet. So wait, wait, they number. said to you? Well, I said it to them. Oh, I was going to so, say. Well, he did kind of make it seem like they said it to like him. Like they walked up to yeah. him no, no, and no, said, I, what's your plans? Well, I mean, you know, conversation throughout the building, and then... Hey, what are you doing this weekend? I'm not sure yet. Here, here's my number. All right. I don't know who's who in this discussion. I know. There's I, two I, people I, that sound exactly like him and E Rock. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? I don't know. How about you? I'm one person. Yeah. Now you're the one that went to that all boys school, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. and you used to uh, I, I I hear tell through Sam Roberts that you used to do some you used to play little uh, games little reindeer games over there at the uh, at the all boys school. <laughs> yeah, I mean you know, it, if you didn't play the games, you were gay. 
What game? Was, what was the name of the game? Oh, where's the junk? Where's <laughs> your junk? Where's your junk? Where's your where's junk? junk? And if you didn't play the game, you're gay. Oh, that's how they got around <laughs> yeah. it. Oh, where, where, where's, where's your junk? Yeah, I don't listen to the show. game. <laughs> you, uh, when we're in the locker room, right, and uh, we would have our hands by our sides. Oh boy. And we would just go around. It's kind of like Marco Polo. Were the lights uh, on or off? Light, lights were off. Okay. Lights off. <laughs> kind of like that, yeah. Danny just pulled up a great were you, photo. We you clothed oh. or nude? <laughs> clothed. Oh. Clothed. Okay. And uh, we so just who would turn the lights off? You just someone who you know. And they'd say, "Let's play Where's Coach. Your Junk." Yeah. Where's your junk? So okay. So how many guys would play Where's Your Junk? Uh, usually around like six to. I don't know, 10, 11. Okay, wow. so 6 to 10. <laughs> That's like so 20 balls. Yeah, let's say 8. <laughs> you guys would all stand in the locker room with your clothes on, hands by your side. The lights are out, and? And uh, you would go around grabbing people's junk. And uh, if you didn't get yours grabbed, then you won. How does anyone know? <laughs> well, you'd say, I grabbed your junk. And then... <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. How old were you when you played this? Uh, 16. <laughs> 16? I mean, yeah, wow. we just go around like, I don't know. And you, 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 I still don't get how but you know like, if somebody didn't get their junk grabbed. <laughs> Who's the genius who conceptualized this? Oh, man. How do I grab his cock, his <laughs> right, cock? Right, right. I want a room full of dick to hold on to. How can I swing this? And whoever doesn't do it is a fag. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How did they say that if you, if you didn't do it, you're, you, it's gay? Didn't anybody say, no, see? Nah, I mean, I don't... if you, like, once you did it, you'd just be like, ha faggot. Like, just make fun of them. <laughs> to the middle of the mirror? <laughs> 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 wow, that's... Uh, so you'd have to be on the something. honor system pretty yeah. much, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's like, system. hey, I didn't get my junk grabbed, and then everyone went, oh, poor guy. Did you ever grab one of those hard? No. <laughs> No. Come on, they were never hard. No, Did never. you ever grab one that felt bigger than the other oh, ones? Oh yeah, though? oh yeah. You, so you really <laughs> felt through the. You knew. Well, it was just like quick grab. It was like. And were they wearing sweatpants sometimes? No underwear. No, no, no. Just uh, khakis. We How khakis. could you see where we they were though? <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole reason. It's like. Oh, you didn't. Would people? So you just you would just <laughs> reach like uh, <laughs> into the darkness, but yeah, you, and yeah, hope you ended up with a cock in your hands. Your hands, pretty much. Like, oh, on by your, your side. side. Yeah. So did you grab their ass cheeks? Wait, wait. Too? So Sometimes. you would you would have to oh. turn toward people and fucking like bump. <laughs> yeah. So your dicks are bumping together too. Yeah, kind of. Oh wow, jeez. <laughs> oh, it's bad enough no, to grope around, but you're talking. The one one rule is to keep you. It was like just. You could just you could move your forearms. But you can you now understand that that was just an excuse. Oh yes, to touch each other's penises. Somebody yeah. so wanted to just touch dick. Yeah. How often did you play it? Oh, every night. No, like I don't know. Whenever someone after gym class, and we'd have gym. Oh, like, sweaty. <laughs> nice. That's when you want balls after they've been yeah. fucking climbing up and down oh, rope. Sam <laughs> Dusky's there. Yeah, so who would suggest it? How would it get suggested? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like one person would just grab a. Grab your nuts and then just be like, "Where's the junk? Let's go." He would start by grabbing your nuts while the lights were still on. Oh, that's yeah. not fucking Did you ever? Nice. Did anybody ever start the game by grabbing you? No. Did no. you ever start the game? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you uh, you started the game. It was just wow. fun. Did you have one guy specifically that you like no, to grab his? Yeah, would you always go for the black guy? Yeah, <laughs> jump grab. No, we didn't really have any ah, kids in our school. Hey, who's what got a your school. shaft? Yeah, it was uh, nice. The school there, man. Wow. So you would you would grab someone and say, "Let's go for a game of junk grab," and everybody was just automatically on board. Yeah. <laughs> And you went to an all boys school. Yeah, oh, it, was a, God. it was the best time of my life. I loved oh, it. Wow. <laughs> How could that be the best time? Because, when... like, going into school, we would just rip on teachers. It was just like every yeah, we day. We do that in our school. schools, and there were the girls around for? too to fucking play games with and to grab. They could grab your dick. And what would you rip on teachers for? Like, ah, I bet you he likes grabbing pussies. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, like uh, my one English teacher, he had a stroke. Not that that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jesus. He, uh, so did all of you during that game. <laughs> 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 so he like was paralyzed on like half his body. Uh -huh. Not half his body, but like his face and everything. So he can't hear out of one ear. So we would throw quarters at the window and say a bird ran over there, ran into the window. And like just everybody in the class would just run over to the window and he would be like, Arr. he'd just get all pissed off and everything like that. And then wait, you turn off the lights and start touching each other's dicks. <laughs> I'd rather yeah, play then, the dick grab And then grab half of his dick <laughs> or, or his one atrophied ball. <laughs>
And what's the other game you used to play? Oh, credit card swipe? No. Credit <laughs> card swipe? Well, that was this was a game like oh boy. <laughs> over the whole day. Uh-huh. So it was like... Oh, not just gym class. <laughs> no, <laughs> not, no not one short, fleeting grab of a cock. Yeah, so you would go around and like in the hallway and everything, just like go up the guy's ass crack with like your hand or a book or something like that, and then yeah. call him a faggot. <laughs> Were there any games that didn't take place uh, in the portion of the body where the bathing suit covers? <laughs> it was always right there, all fun, your fun little games. Yeah, yeah, there was the nipple suck, <laughs> where we just go around sucking each other's nipples. That's what happens, by the way, in these stupid all-boys schools. Yes. Because guys get, you get your sexual curiosity, so they start just taking out their curiosity on each other, because there's no girls there to fucking try it out with. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, it's, it's that's definitely... That's all it is. I would have to agree. Because you want to touch and be touched. It's sexually no based. Girls. Let's yeah. be fucking reasonable here. Yeah. Your, your, your uh, uh, adolescence... Your uh, hormones are going crazy. Raging. And then they're throwing you all together as just boys in a school. It's, uh, Jesus Christ. Jesus It's like, Jesus (laughs) Son of a bitch. (laughs) What the hell are you doing? What would your dad say (laughs) if he walked into a locker room and you and your friends were playing Where's Your Junk? Tarryton in mouth. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) Son of a bitch. What the hell are you faggots doing? <laughs> he would take a drag off the tarot. Oh, he'd take a drag. <laughs> One eye would shut because the smoke like wafted into it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, you would be such a faggot in his eyes. You'd have to go through man training like I did, which entails just drinking beer, having sex with a fucking town Buzz. slut. And almost being molested in the bushes by, yes, fucking... by a Mexican. So, um... Did your parents know you were playing Where's Your Drunk? No. Did they listen? Yeah. No. Why not? They're not proud of you? No. Yeah. Uh, my mom listened, like, the first day, mm-hmm. mm. and she was like, mm. I think what they're saying is funny, but they curse a lot. And it's like... Hey, okay. fuck that. Yeah. She's right. You yeah, really do. <laughs> so wait a minute. So now so let blue. me ask you. Was there one guy who you noticed would grab your junk a lot? There had to be a pattern. You yeah. had to notice a pattern. Yeah, there were a couple. Like, all right, like two weeks ago I saw a kid from high school, and I haven't seen him in a while. And, mm. like, he came over, and, like, we were at the bar, and he was just, like, like touching me and everything. And it was oh, just like, he wanted to play the game again. <laughs> yeah, but How it was, was he just touching like, you? Oh. Like, he would grab my balls. What? <laughs> at the bar? <laughs> Yeah. Not and it's like, I know, exactly. it's like girl. It's like at the bar. Yeah. Yeah. He grabbed your balls. Or like the just ball. like grab my nipples and shit. And you'd just be like, what the fuck are you doing? Is he like, out of the closet? Holy I, shit! No, but I think he's like for but, sure he is. Oh yeah. So he grabbed your cock wow. at the bar. Wow. Mm-hmm. And what did he say? Wow. He was like, hey, how's it going? And I was just like, dude, oh. like... Yeah, but you know what? Hey, Bobby we touched cocks in school, school but you objected. Not now. Yeah, dude. Bobby, yeah. Dude. <laughs> Bobby the Champ used to do stuff like that. Bobby the Champ, no homo intern. <laughs> no homo. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on. Too. Maybe, yeah. I think <laughs> like, once everyone got out of high school, it was just like, all right, whatever. Like, this is done. Yeah, but would you ever, would you guys go off to college and then meet up for summer, like the American Pie kids, but then turn off the lights and grab each other's <laughs> no. jokes? Oh. Exactly. No. Did you ever do it when everyone was in their underwear in the locker room? No. <laughs> yeah. Any of that? No. No. Unfortunately not. Any bare fucking bare but, ass but gym shorts. games? Any snapping the towels in the locker room <laughs> on the asses? A horse play? <laughs> yeah. No. Horse play like in Oregon? <laughs> Isn't that where they fuck the horses? Yeah. Oh, Washington. Oh, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> gym shorts, though. Pacific Northwest. I'm yeah, sure they're fucking shorts. in there, too. <laughs> you know. Gym shorts, yeah. Mm-hmm. Testicles hanging out of the fucking pant leg. So there was one Not guy day. that would just probably always go for you. Who is the one student, that, without his last name, but who is the one student that would always go for you? Joe. <laughs> <laughs> what would Joe wow. do? He would just, and he was big. He played football. Oh, of course right. he did. <laughs> right. Yeah. He played in college, too, and everything. Oh, and, did he? Yeah. Mm, <laughs> don't ask, like, don't tell. So, so what would happen? Like, the lights would go out and Joe would just beeline for you? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, wow. It was weird. At sometimes. Did so you how ever... would Joe grab it too long? Yeah. Did, did anyone ever grab it too long? Yeah. Like a really good grab? Yeah, did someone like... ever grab just... you until you came? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With their mouth? <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. How, how long would they grab you for? Just like a quick second, not even. But would you know if Joe was grabbing you? Because yeah, Joe yeah, would yeah. leave his hand there. And you could feel his big beefy man <laughs> hands, his linebacker <laughs> oh, hand. Oh, God. Yeah. Sweating. Was... How did you get girls if you after wanted school. them? I mean, like... After school. There was... We had, like, sister schools, I guess. Like, yeah? all girls schools. Where they would just fucking 
Yeah. Che- fucking scissoring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, grabbing they're their playing, little titties. They were playing stink finger in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you'd hear. The lights would go out and you'd hear giggling and... <laughs> <laughs> stink finger. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, man, that sounds like you were having a blast over there at that school. It was a good time. <clears throat> and uh, this guy that uh, touched your, your dick, how did that whole thing end in the bar? Did you buy oh. him a drink? <laughs> Flurry hole? What happened? No, I just, like, it was in front of girls, too, and I was just Aww. like, like, get the fuck away hey, from me. Hey, let's do this in front of men, yeah, not in front exactly. of the girls like this. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> You're not helping your case here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, you, you objected, uh, like, dude, what the, what, yeah, what dude, the fudge? Dude, come well, on. It was just awkward. Kiss, like, kiss like, hello we, first. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Were you in theater when you were in high school? I did a little production. Oh, little boy. Did oh, a little bit. Boy. But it was like eighth grade. What type of what musical? Mm-hmm. What musical was it? It was Bye Bye Birdie. What did you play? B I B I. I was Conrad Birdie. You were Birdie. I was. Of course, starring role right there. Oh yeah. Can you sing? Uh, not really. What's well, a musical? What do you have to sing? Um, like uh, it's one of the classics that you sang. Yeah. yeah. I've like, never heard it. I've, I've got a lot of song. living to do. Oh, there are chicks just right for some <laughs> kissing. He gets right into it. <laughs> What's the song? There are chicks. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to lower his voice and everything. Uh, I'm grabbing go? cock <laughs> in the dark room. Uh, it's like, I got a lot of living to do. Sizzling steaks. Oh. <laughs> Terrible. Sing it. What is this? What it's is horrible. This? Well, come on. Oh, I forget the words. All right, so sing, oh, sing the Dr. Them. Pepper song. You're saying outside. <laughs> Dr. Pepper, yeah, yeah, yeah. You make the world taste better. You make the world taste better. He's dancing <laughs> like a... He starts oh, dancing yeah. when he sings the song. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> what are you dancing around like that for? What are you, queer? <laughs> are you I'm this bud. No, not at all. Okay. No, have you ever uh, experimented? Uh, nope. And don't lie. No. Than... I'll smell it on you. Everyone says that uh, there's always this experimentation thing, but everyone denies it. No, yeah. honest. What happened? Well, how Never. do you know that you're what not? What happened at then? the school? Because I, I don't, I don't yeah. get hard when I'm around guys. Oh. Never. Oh. Never. Oh. When's the one time you did? Come on, don't lie. <laughs> Talk in a room full of guys. We understand. Oh. Exactly. Oh. Let's turn the lights off. <laughs> yeah. Grab each other. Well, what was the time that you, you wound up getting a rod around a guy? No, yeah. I've never really. Had to be. I've gotten, like, random boners in school, but that's it. Yeah, like, yeah, they random. Were, you know. Looking at somebody. Yeah. Did you ever get a random boner while you were playing uh, no. Grab Your Junk? No. Yeah. How about this? You, um, you're at a school. You, you, you got some uh, porn videos. You ever watch porn videos with your guy pals? Yeah, we had laptops in school, uh-huh, uh-huh. so like people would just always watch porn. Little porn, mm-hmm. and what? You ever you ever jack off uh, with your uh, pet buddies watching some porn? <laughs> no. <laughs> you never jacked off with another guy in the room? Nope. Oh. Did you ever have your dick out with another guy in the room? Oh yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> now what is that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, just like, just like I don't know. You, you wasn't just... a suit. <laughs> did you ever yeah. do? Did you ever do tricks with it, like swinging around and stuff <laughs> no. to make each other laugh? <laughs> No, I'd just be like, oh, I don't know. Just, Why you would you have <laughs> your dick out in a room with another guy? Well, like, it was like a bunch of guys. Oh, <laughs> like a gangbang. <laughs> so what would you do? Like, come yeah, on. What's the context of that? I don't know. We'd just be like, hey, let's pull our dicks <laughs> out. <laughs> kind of. Or like, so, not, I would never pull it out. It'd just be like Someone dancing. else would? <laughs> yeah, who would pull it out? Yeah, who would pull it out for you? Joe. Joe, what <laughs> no, uh, what would you what would you do, and how would, would all just, the dicks come out? I don't know. It just somehow come out. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't <laughs> just mosey out. It has to be taken out. It would just, uh, uh, just kind of. Like, what would you guys be doing? You'd all be hanging out in the room, watching what, or talking, or doing what, drinking? Yeah, yeah, a lot of drinking. Okay, so you all had uh, a few beers. You're feeling loose. Yeah, and then uh, not never any touching. Never. Skin to skin touching. Okay, good. Just yeah. a lot of masturbating and looking at each other. <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't get it. Well, hold on. No skin to skin touching. Get it. So what would happen? What would, what would you guys be drinking? What happened? Walk us through it. Uh, and then like I don't know. You, you just like flash from your dick because it's like ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so wait, who's going ah? The guy who with his mouth open. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <They're> playing doctor. <laughs> ah. <laughs> No. So you'd flash the dick, and then what would happen? He'd go, ah, oh, like, I don't want to see that. Yeah, or like, he'd look anyway. 
I don't know, and then you call him a faggot. It's like, you ever ah, see... <laughs> yeah. You know, that's just the, that's the excuse yeah. <laughs> like, that is supposed to make everything see, like, better. that movie Waiting? No. No? No. Yeah. no. Good no. point. Yeah. But I have seen Philadelphia. <laughs> 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 so, okay, so... Well, you, you flash your dick at a guy, and he goes like, ah! Not the balls, the dick? The balls, too. Well, you can oh, cup the balls and make it like a brain. Like, I know people yeah. who flash their balls as a goof. Yeah. But not really? their dicks. Yeah, yeah I, have a, one, I have a guy I know who likes to just be like, guys, this is nuts, and point down. <laughs> and he's holding his balls. He's got a punchline for it, though. <laughs> yeah. It's not like this guy just hanging out with a bunch of guys with their dicks out. <laughs> yeah. I don't just, understand that. But he's never pulled out his shaft and been like, look at this guy. <laughs> Look at this. Presenting it. Well, you know, and then, did everyone in the room have their dicks out? Uh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, that would like, be crazy. Just yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, someone. Like, one person would just be like, ah, And fuck. who judged him? Yeah. Yeah, was that <laughs> oh, it? Panel? I mean, who was it like had, American Idol? Who had the biggest of you and your friends? Joe. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know. Uh, yes, you do. Yeah, you <laughs> who know. Who had the biggest? You know. We know you know. I don't know. They were... Uh, okay, never, fine, like, fine. Never, who, had, who had the nicest then? Well, I would have to say me. Is that who who had the biggest penis of you and your friends? Probably girth wise, it was this kid Mike. Oh, Mike had the girthiest. <laughs> what about the length? This other kid, Rob. What about Sack, who had a nice full sack? I never like judge sacks. Just shaft. No. <laughs> Loves that. Joe, what am I gonna do with yeah. those balls? <laughs> Joe, you can't put the balls in you. No. <laughs> Just lovely sack. Checking out girth and width. That's oh. all he cared about. <laughs> Wonderful so sack. So Rob and Mike. Rob had the length, and Mike. So put them together. It's perfect, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rob actually just had a baby. It's weird. Yeah. Why? Because he's gay. Because he's got a big dick. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just <laughs> like cock. like we're 21. I've never. I don't know. Never really seen a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. that's uh, something. You guys, uh, yes. I, bet, I bet there's so much shit going on. What were the was was everybody that played these games were they all white or was there their uh, mixed races going? No, on? no, all white. How did yeah. I? How did I know? Yeah, I know? This doesn't happen. I don't think this happens. Black people was well, no. we didn't really have black people in our school. Yeah. There were like three of them, and they were the, just the whitest kids. Paradise ever. High School. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> Uh, I had to deal with give me 50 cent. Oh, yeah, but yeah, he yeah. had to deal with, uh, you know, touching me, guys to uh, cocks. Let me hold a dollar. Yeah, and he's like, let I'd me I'd much hold rather let you hold cock. the dollar. <laughs> yeah. You'd have all the dollars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yo, let me hold that dick, son. <laughs> what? No. Yo, for a minute, let me get that dick, bitch. For a minute, I give it back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I'll give it right back, son. So, so let did, me hold that dick. Okay. Did you enjoy, did Joe ever do the flash in the room? Like, yeah, hey, look at that, you faggot. <laughs> no, actually. He's actually the one who's never done it. Yeah. Did Joe have a big penis? Joe? I don't know. How did uh, it feel when you grabbed it? I don't know. I'd never go for Joe's dick. How would you know? The why would out. you? Why would you choose you whose dick you went for? I mean, was... Whose dick would you go for? <laughs> like so, when w before you would turn <laughs> the lights so out. So fucked up. <laughs> Before there had you, to be one guy who's would dick. You, would you, like, have the lights on and be like, okay, I'm targeting him, and then the lights would go out no, and I wouldn't really, him. like, target anybody. You'd just, like, go around. And, but, like, so I you knew, stay... You knew your friends you knew, based on cock feel? No, I... No. Like, you, you could feel, like... You, the, just, you like, could feel the girthier one, you're like, I know who that kid is. Well, it wasn't, like, dark, dark in the room. It was, like... Essential. Uh, you could still make eye contact. Oh, oh, it was yeah. romantic. Just <laughs> enough to see the goodness. <laughs> so you would, uh... Now, who would you normally go for? If you had to target somebody, you'd avoid Joe. Yeah, I'd avoid Joe. He was a little yeah. risky. Yeah. <laughs> a little, uh, huh. he liked it a little too hey, much. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Of course not. Obviously not. <laughs> yeah. I just don't so who it. would you target? Um, I don't know. There were just a bunch of people. This kid, Mike. Another kid, Mike. <laughs> not girthy, Mike. Girthy Mike. <laughs> he didn't like the girth on Mike. It was intimidating. He liked yeah. the other Mike, who was just average. Yeah. He, he liked to hold the entire one. He didn't like Mike because he couldn't wrap his little hand around it. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't uh, understand this whole thing. You know? Well, don't I mean, get it. it was just like. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's trying to. <laughs> it wasn't. You don't think it was? No. It wasn't just. <laughs> what do you think it was? <laughs> I think it's a very homoerotic <laughs> thing with the guys that, uh, you know, there's no girls around. Guys are going to go fucking crazy. You want to start grabbing dick. dick. Yeah. Start grabbing dick. When I was a kid, my dad had the biggest porno collection. Like, he oh. had magazines and tapes and everything. And so once, once the word was out, 
that, that that's what was going down at my house. All my friends, they always wanted to come to my house because they wanted to watch the porno. Yeah. So then you get to the age where, where you know, you, it, it makes you feel something, and now all my friends wanted to come over and jerk off. <laughs> now, no one, wa- no one jerked each other off. Now, every time this went down, I would feel, I'd be like, why do, why do they always want to jerk off with each other? Yeah. And, like, back then, that was weird to me. And if someone tried to grab my dick, that would be a big no. Wait, yes. you would, so but, your friends would jerk off, and you'd be yeah. in the room watching them No, 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 no. They, <clears throat> yeah. no they would, it would be like, uh, let's all cut school, come to my house, and then, you know. Jerk off. And then some <laughs> people would be like, oh, let's, let's watch your dad's on. porn. Hey, let's, well, let's pop in a porn. I'm like, yeah, hey, you guys can do whatever you want to do, you know. I'm not. I'm not gonna hang out with you and and, and beat off with you guys. <laughs> would you, if your friends came over your house and were like, no, "Let's I, all jerk off," you would. If all your friends were jerking off, you wouldn't be like, "Rad." No way. No. Yes, you totally. Would. I would not at yeah. all. You'd succumb to peer pressure. Probably. No. I do succumb to peer and, pressure easily. And you'd come. Oh, do you? Uh, wow. <laughs> he says he succumbs to. <laughs> yeah, and you'd come too. To peer pressure. Wow. Well. Yeah. And uh, cock pressure. The, the pressure your peers are putting on your dick. Yeah. yeah. Wow. All right. Some, with their mouths. That's, uh... What was the closest you ever upbringing. came to jacking off with a friend? I've never, like... Never uh, jacking that. off with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, like, thought about it. Or, like, really? Yeah, I've never, like... W- I've never had wanted to do it. I've Did you ever jerk that. off and then for a second while you're jerking off think of dick grab and be like, oh, no, 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 and go back to what you were thinking about before? <laughs> no. Never no. once? No. Did you ever, while you were jerking off, think about... You catch about, yourself in the mirror and you get harder? <laughs> did you ever no. think about, like, while you were jerking off for a second, just for a quick second, a glimpse of Girthy Mike's cock popped into your brain, and then you go, like, no, 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 and you shook it out and went back to what you were doing? I mean, it's, like, happened, but, like... <laughs> Like happen. Okay, that's what I thought. That's, that's not what maybe. I'm jerking off. It's no, just it like, just pops in there. You can't control it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, come yeah. on. What right. do you thought of Girthy Mike's cock or Rob's longer <laughs> unit? Well, now I'm thinking of it now. How's it look? <laughs> it's girthy. Yeah, I thought so. It's girthy. <laughs> you would probably joke about it with him too. Hey, how's that girthy monster doing? Yeah. 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 You uh, had a hell of a uh, little upbringing there. Do you realize that you went to meet one of your one of your high school buddies, and the first thing you wanted to do was touch your dick <laughs> after like, all these gay frolics in, in in school? It was like it was like sophomore year, not like freshman year. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So let's oh, say. Oh, that's different. <laughs> At its peak, yeah. approximately how many times per week would someone who's not you touch your penis? <laughs> it's a fair question. A ma- a male who's not you, right? Mm. Maybe. Twice, at its peak. At its peak, yeah. The busiest week. Yeah. yeah. So only one game of fucking cock grab a week. I don't think that's. I don't buy that. I don't know. Know. Once you find a fun game like that, you're gonna <laughs> want to play, yeah, play it. Yeah, of course. So like, I think I'm pretty sure that cock grab happened more gym classes than not. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like most, yeah. the, the vast majority of changing for gym involved a game of dick grab. I think. Eh, you know what I would try to convince my gym class to do? We all wanted to play crab soccer so we could look up the girls' as shorts. Mm, that's yeah, what, that's right what, up that's the what my group leg. of friends were trying to get, get yep. done. Right up class. that short leg. We, never had, we didn't have girls. So oh, yeah. Like, oh. All we could do was grab dick. <laughs> Boy, I that forget. really, really works out for the, the guys not having girls in the school. It's a great idea sending your fucking boys to an all-boys school. Yeah. Amazing, Shit like yeah. this goes on. Yeah. The last thing you'd want is those girls to be a distraction. Right. <laughs> Again, it's like that fucking movie I can never remember the name of, where they all get molested. Oh, Cock Grab. <laughs> Cock Grab. Not Sleepers with Kevin Bacon. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, you lived Sleepers. God, Brad Pitt. That's a great that's fucking movie. Yeah, that's fucking sick De Niro's shit. in that? Yeah, yeah. Fucking everyone. Yeah, De Niro. Is the which, which celebrity? Name two celebrities that you would like to play Dick Grab with that you think would be fun. Oh, <laughs> Name two. <laughs> well, I'd have to say Brad Pitt. Uh-huh. Ah, Brad and, Pitt. But he's got a little one. It'd be hard to play with. Oh. See, I, I would play with Vanilla Ice. I've seen the Pumps and Bump video. Oh, no, <laughs> he is out. <laughs> is he a big penis? <laughs> yes, it's monsters. <laughs> vanilla Ice. Ma, not vanilla MC Ice. Hammer. I'm sorry. Did I say Vanilla Ice? MC Hammer. MC Hammer. Is vanilla Pumps and Bump. Ice. <laughs> vanilla. Vanilla. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> so who are the two celebrities you'd like to play Dick Grab with? Yeah. Uh, Brad Pitt. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Al Pacino in his prime. Oh, wow. Al Pacino in his like prime. Like Jog Day Afternoon prime, or what's prime? Mm. I'd say, like... <laughs> well, he was probably playing Cock Grab in that movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you realize um, he didn't say only male celebrity? 
<laughs> you, you could have picked any hot fucking female you actress. Just Bailey J. <laughs> but you, you decided to choose two men. <laughs> and one of them is the quintessential uh, sexy man, Brad Pitt. Every right. guy, every girl and gay guy thinks Brad Pitt is an attractive. Yeah. I think he's a good actor. <laughs> oh, well, sure. There you go. You think he's handsome? I think he's handsome. He's a handsome guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, oh, here's the video. Yeah, this that's... pumps in a bump. Oh, of course it is. Oh my God, you'll hammer like time. Rob. You'll like not this part, but you'll get to hammer's it. pool was. Great. Oh yeah, see, you like this. Right? Oh my yeah. God, <laughs> what the fuck is Hammer wearing? He's this is a, an obscene video. Yeah, he's got. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've never seen this. He's a wreck. Was this on MTV? Yeah, dude. <laughs> this is my desktop background for quite some time. Doesn't he, have, <laughs> doesn't he have a hard on halfway through the video? Dude, I'm pretty sure he was fluff for the whole thing. <laughs> He's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, that's bizarrely big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's hard. He's he's getting uh, pumped up there a little bit. Pumped would would you grab that? Would you grab that? No. How is this a video? <laughs> That's when he was trying to redo his image, like his uh, wow. the MC Hammer. The uh, can't touch this thing was like lame. Yeah. And his made for TV movie. He regretted doing this video very much. Did he? Yeah, because he's a Christian. Uh, was he a Christian during this? Oh yeah. And he's got his dick, and he's virtually Look pumping girls in the ass with it. He's hard. Yeah. Look how good his dick looks. <laughs> <laughs> you right? like that dick? <laughs> what year was this? This had to be like 92 or 3, Yeah, right? this was probably like 90. It was right as his fame was fleeing. This was the last hurrah. This fucking and it wasn't video a big is hit. insane. Was this, was this popular? No. What's the song? Pumps in a Bump. Can we hear it? Here, pump it up a little bit. He was trying to get that, that gangster sound. Yeah, yeah, with that horn thing in the background, kind of. What's the pumps in the bump, by the way? The pumps it, is yeah. the shoes, and the okay. pump is the ass. Oh, it's, all, it's the same shit. I thought shit. it was pumps in the bump. Hmm. Oh, pumps and the I bump. I understand his message. Ah, yeah. I do, too, want the pumps. Was this right. a, was pumps this a and the bumps. Me. Yeah. Pelvic thrust. Oh, man. <laughs> He's <Pumps> dancing. <laughs> He's Not dancing horribly. <laughs> oh. And then after this video, Jimmy Hammer the started the pumps and a bump. Hammer started coming out in like baggy pants and like a gangster like wool hat oh. that was you know pulled up on top. Was and... this a popular song? No. No. What was... came first, this or Too Legit to Quit? Too Legit was before this. Too Legit was at least somewhat popular. That was popular, even though it was terrible. Too legit and can't touch this and stuff. This was like the follow up after he can't was touch fading this out. was his giant hit. He was trying to reinvent himself. Did he yeah. start to fade in ninety two? Yeah. Ninety two, ninety three. Yeah, whatever yeah. year that was. When was uh Can't Touch This? Okay. That'd be like eighty nine ninety. Ninety ish, yeah. 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 Cause I, I was still in guys, I was still in elementary school. I remember that. Ah, uh, elementary school. <laughs> I think that was about fifth or sixth grade. Damn. Can't touch Don't you this. feel like having sex to this song? <laughs> yeah. With a guy? <laughs> God, Hammer's dick is so nice. Yeah, you like that one, don't you? <laughs> Looks <laughs> weird. <laughs> He's just like shaking his, his shoulders. He shrugged. You give, well. Sand, you give Sandusky answers. You should just say, no, yeah. it's not a nice cock. Well, listen. <laughs> There's there a lot of dicks I didn't touch. Yeah. Yeah. There were far more cocks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was a good one. That's a lot of cock on that MC. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, uh, well, now we know why he's called Hammer. Thank you. Exactly. He had Hammer in his pants. Absolutely. We, we want to hear the Dr. Pepper song real quick before he goes? <laughs> well, that's, that's how it. this whole thing started, Sam. Yeah. Oh, we might as well come okay. full circle. All right. <laughs> Dr. Pepper, yeah, yeah, yeah. You make the world taste better. <laughs> It's terrible. <laughs> it's horrible. You start in fucking plays and you can't sing in musicals? Yeah, you're horrible. I, I was, was Wait, you went grade. to an all-boys school. Bye so bye did Bernie. they have like a guy in a... Yeah, yeah. This is eighth grade. Oh, silly me. in grammar school. So. Did, oh, so you had girls in the yeah, school. Yeah, were, I, there, were, there play, were there productions in your all-boys school? No. No. Well, yeah, that would be real, really rough. Yeah. Guys and guys. <laughs> Shakespeare did it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He dressed up guys in wigs. Oh, man. Pumps yeah. in a bump. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, uh. it's a nice ass on that one. That girl. Um, that's MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, ready. I am just comfortable with my sexuality. Well, apparently, I'm and straight. other boys' sexuality are comfortable with them. So it's 
Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, AJ Poopy Shots. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great appearance. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, I love chicks. Yeah. yeah. I love talking about fingering have, their pussies. Do you love chicks with tits? He's, um... What's your favorite part of a chick? Do you like the tits? Probably the labias, like, like the majora and the minoras. Yeah. Probably just all of them. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. It doesn't tits or ass. Oh yeah. No, he doesn't care. Is there anything <laughs> I could rub my dick on? That's a chicks. It's all good, right? You don't care. I mean, like, if I had to choose one, I'd go tits. All right, he's a guy who likes chicks with tits. Yeah, <laughs> I chicks got with tits. I've known guys yeah. like that. He's just a guy who likes chicks with tits. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Yeah. yeah. He just—he's so lackadaisical about the tits and the ass and stuff. But boy, could he talk about cock? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's what it was. Shit. Do you prefer uh, tits or ass? I don't care. Which of your friends had the girthiest <laughs> cock? Yeah. That was Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know all those guys. No, Mike had the girth. Mike? Rob had the length. Yeah. Oh, right. Joe yeah. was the football player oh, yeah. whose didn't really thick show. linebacker hands would grab this young charge. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, I can only touch a lot <laughs> of that. Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pumps in the bumps. All right, All right. All right. Bye, get your fucking, See you, sweetie. Get your sweet ass out of here. <laughs> he wow. is a sweet boy. Oh, he really so is a sweet. sweetie. Yeah, right. That was uh, uncomfortable. That was fun. Bit. Yeah. And uh, I guess we'll uh, return. Mike yeah. Baker's not coming in today. Oh. No. No. Nope. Okay. Why? No big. Brolin said he, he corrected himself, and then he texted. Um, Eric confused me. So he's blaming Eric. Confused me. He said a word yesterday during the uh, shit show when I was driving home. We do after show. Yeah, whatever. And uh, I could not understand what he was saying. You had no idea. No, it was. He said it in a way where it just it was a slur. The whole thing was just. <laughs> it was like Sherzine. <laughs> Sherzine. And I tried to figure it out, and I did. And he just doesn't break up words into syllables. Could you not, like, video? Oh, he said video, too. Video was video. Yeah. Yeah, I said, I said the video. 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 Oh, and maybe he was trying to tell you about his new television from Physio. Visio. And, and he switches all his CHs and SHs. Oh, oh. Like, he'll go, like, sit down in the chair. In the chair. Son in of a bish. Son yeah. of a bish. Yeah. yeah you yeah. son of a bish. Son of a bish. <laughs> he's a he's quite a confused uh, little guy. Oh, I want to hear the Sandusky way back. I really want to hear. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, talk about the Sandusky because uh, he's wow, he's I actually hear taking the, a stand today. Today, what time? Today, today. Is Court TV still exist or is that True TV? It's True TV. Okay, but th they're not uh, broadcasting the trial. Right? I don't think so. No, oh. no. This one's just those artist renderings. Okay, it's all state to state, which is uh, I hate that when they don't put it on TV. People love watching. Uh, Sensational trials. Well, oh, that Casey Anthony thing was pretty compelling. I don't even have to talk about OJ. That was great. All right, we'll be back in a matter of uh, moments. Thank you very much. Yeah. He's doing a new movie about. Uh, I don't care about his movies. Hockey. What? Hockey. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. What the fuck is that about? I because just, isn't uh, Kevin Smith doing that? Yeah, I don't know. Movie? I just started getting tweets What's about it. about hockey yesterday? movies? Yeah. Not about yeah. the hockey movie. Something about a hockey movie <laughs> with a hockey movie. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> I did say dress a lot. Oh, didn't it was I? great. A dress. Something about a dress. You had a dress. <laughs> yeah, I was an ass. Oh, you certainly were. Uh, I was, uh, of course, uh, Twitter. Who doesn't just go on Twitter every second of the day, day and night? It's just something that it's just always there. Has it become a part of your entire life? Yeah. Why? Like, it's weird. Like, there's never a moment where you would wait for anything. You, no. You would pick up your phone and check Twitter. There's no downtime anymore where you're doing nothing. Because the second you're not doing anything, I grab for my phone and I check Twitter. It's because we have instant access to everything now. Yeah. Like, when's the last time you could basically just be involved in a discussion with everybody? That's where you have to yeah. leave your phone at home sometimes. No. Will you eat tea or something? Ah, uh, phone. Oh. Uh, Double oh, phones. I, I said, <laughs> it makes sense. And I said, Double phone at phones. home. <laughs> Double phones. Double phones. Around. He, he kept running around going, phone at home. No, he didn't. Phone at home. Yes, he did with his fingers glowing. No, he said, phone home. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. <laughs> it's the most quotable movie of all time. E.T., what was he, Eddie Trunk or something? 
Oh, that's pretty good. That metal shell. Yeah, that's for pretty extra, good. Extraterrestrial. Yeah. No, it didn't. It was uh, Eddie Trunk. Eddie Trunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I swear. <laughs> Wrong on that one, Sam. Yeah. You, uh, you get, you get uh, like I said, no, no downtime. You're constantly looking. At least I am. I don't know. But, but, but from the looks of Twitter, there's a lot of fucking people doing that. Yeah. It's completely changed how you spend any time of the day especially when you're not really doing anything important. Like, I've had to rewind uh, with things I'm watching on TV because I was tweeting something and missed what I was watching. Why don't I just watch the fucking movie? I've, I've had to completely lay off. Like, I was at the point where it was like, well, I'm not going to just sit here at a red light. <laughs> i got to check what's going on on Twitter or you know, something. Yeah, yeah. And I, that's, like, not good. I was kind of doing that uh, yesterday, driving home. Really? Yeah, I noticed. I was like, oh, what am I doing? I'm... I'm tweeting as i'm driving very illegal but then i kept seeing commercials about guys with brain damage who were texting while driving and got into car accidents that new campaign uh, yeah. that's on, on uh tv they're showing people that are fa ha hucked up yeah uh and it's all from text and they show the, the text. text yeah it's like here's the text and did you see oh. what it said uh, yeah where are where Just the letter. it was like where and the letter r and that's all he got out and then he's like and I put my third on in the morning, and I got blend into it. And then there's the other one with the chick with no legs. Yeah. I want to see it. She's kind of hot, too. And then I heard this, uh, I was reading this article about this girl who died because she drove into the back of a truck. Oof. And the guy that she was dating at the time, like her long-term boyfriend, was oh. completely distraught because he realized that he was texting her. <sighs> and, like, the time matches up completely that she was reading his texts. Oh, man. And then drove into the back of an 18-wheeler and killed what herself. What an idiot. Yeah, it's one of those things where they kind of have to do something, because it really is. It's a new phenomenon in the last few years, and yep. a lot of people are getting killed because of it. Yeah. I've seen so many cars weaving down the road and, and, and doing... Making baskets. Uh, you know, not we. Oh, my gosh. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> uh, weaving, you know, back and forth down the road. And, uh... You look at them when you pass the car, and, and they're, they're buried in their phone. Fucking damn. It's so dangerous. It's so much worse than I even think drinking and driving. Wow. And, and it's way trying. worse than oh, man. calling. Like, being on the phone is so much safer than texting. Yeah, yeah. Because texting, you have to look down. You're taking your eyes completely off the road. Yeah, not only is your oh. attention gone, but your, phys your eyes are physically not looking anymore. Yeah. Yeah, wow, this is fucking... Pretty graphic uh, yeah. spot here. You're 23 times more like. See, it's easier because I drive right. in the city, so it's a little bit. It's not safe, but it's a little bit. Uh, yeah, but when an asshole, even if you got into like a fender bender, yeah. you feel like such a dickhead because you're like, I was texting. It'd be a nothing text too. Yeah. This is a good yeah. commercial. This fucking. Wow. This is a close up of a fucking mock car accident. Oh, oh. t boned. Damn, there's a lot of blood. Yeah. What the fuck happened? We just texted. <laughs> oh, she's hurting. Oh, great. Oh, oh plane's going to crash into the car. <laughs> yeah. They crashed and then got hit. They but this is a very realistic car video. Like, they really show it. Wow. And the girls are getting texts from people that are, like, mad that they're not responding. Yeah, so? What are yeah. you doing? <laughs> Where are you? They're fucking bloodied in a car. Nice wow. sending them Man. Are these really, uh... Nice pussy picture. It's well worth it. <laughs> <laughs> These are uh, actual photos from... Uh, we're looking at just basically fucked up cars. Yeah. How do we know these are all from texting and driving? They could just be taking, now they're showing fucking, look at that, bodies from the Godfather. That's Sonny giving you shots. <laughs> Sonny at the top. Oh, man, that is fucked up. That car was under the front of a truck. Sonny got out to read a text, and that's what happened. <laughs> I've seen that truck one before. That truck one is definitely from texting. Well, I mean, I think it's from texting. You with the truck just kind of crunched up on the fucking car? Yeah, there's like a sliver of a car on the front of the truck left. How'd that person do? Are they okay? <laughs> no, they passed away. Oh, were they going quickly when they hit each other? I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Sonny got a text from fucking Talia Shire. <laughs> <laughs> He's beating me. LOL. <laughs> oh, I don't want to say who has a full boner. <laughs> oh, no. Why do you have a boner? These girls are cute in that car. <laughs> oh, is that it? <laughs> There's a girls. part where they get hit, and then they stop and look at each other, and then yeah. a car comes and... T-bones them, yeah. Yeah, that was a fucking pretty realistic that video. pretty though. good. You guys never try to leave your phone... Alone? No, no why dude, would I, I should, do that? though. Why Where did I go without my phone recently? It's the greatest. I went out to eat or something, or I went to the oh. cellar, 
And I was like, should I go back for it? And I'm like, no, leave it alone. Yeah. Really? And you did? Yeah. I, I, I need it with me. Like next time you leave the house, just yeah. throw the phone down on the couch and walk out. No. Yeah. I can't do that. I need to have it with me. Why? Because what if something uh, happens that I need to know? Nothing like will happen what? that you need to know. I don't know. A message. Guess what? You'll what? find out about it later. It'll be all good. I don't know. There's life to be lived. I, yeah. I do, but I live it with my phone. I was. That's like when I was in Cleveland, and it was me, Roland, Troy, and Eric at dinner. And the whole time, Troy and Eric are out texting yeah. the entire time. And I've I'm like, seen that. What are that. we doing? I try not to do it at dinner, but I will pick it up and... Uh, and check some things if you know there's a lull. I mean, in the Troy, conversation. Troy was trying to uh, get something going with one of those strippers, so I can't be too mad at him. Well, <laughs> you know, he? Oh, he's always trying to get something going. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's why it. he's on his phone all the time. Yeah, yeah he's, he's always working. working on something. Doing that, posting Instagrams of him skateboarding. <laughs> yeah. Is his Instagram good? No. He is. He, I mean, he's a good Instagrammer, but he's it got is a lot of things. A lot of pictures of him skateboarding. A lot of activities. He's always out clubbing and skateboarding and he's is like he really? hey here's some people painting the brooklyn bridge because i was just downtown fucking wandering around east side and stuff. like he's always out and about he thinks he's healthy but he doesn't realize that he's gonna die young because he doesn't sleep enough oh he needs some sleep yeah yeah is he but always out and about he's always, always out and about i'm never out and about he is a, <laughs> he's a man about town i'm in with chagrin <laughs> boo <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, from his Instagrams. He's always like in some some action. He's like, yeah, he Instagrams something, and he's like, and it's hashtag longboard, skateboard, sidewalk, urban, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. Boss. Boss. Ew. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it is. He doesn't say boss. I don't know if he does. Or not. Hashtag anything. <laughs> It's like, here, here's a picture. Yeah, this is me. Oh, I'm holding fuck. a gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. of course. That's what it is. Hashtag gun. Gun, yeah. gun, 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 gun. Can we hear Sandusky, please? I'm Absolutely. dying to hear this audio. Yes. I have not heard it. We have an hour until Harvey. Sandusky. Why is he I'm dying to hear this. Let's hear... Uh, this is the clip that NBC cut out. Yeah, this is the one they cut out. Uh, all right. This is from the Costas interview. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So it's entirely possible that you could have helped young boy A in some way that was not objectionable young boys A. while horribly <laughs> taking advantage of young boy B, C, D, and E. Isn't that possible? Well, uh, you might think that. I don't know. <laughs> in terms of uh, um, my relationship with so many, many young people, uh, I, would, I would guess that there are many young people who would come forward, many more young people who would come forward and say that my methods and, and what I had done for them made a very positive impact on their life. And I didn't go around seeking out every young person for sexual needs that I've helped. There are many that I didn't have, I hardly had any contact oh, with. Who right there. I have helped in many, many ways. That How was, did they edit that out? That was the big part right there. He fucking admitted right there. NBC? Who the fuck is in charge over there that that is the piece they edit out? That's yeah, like, ah, we got to edit for time. Let's edit out the part where he pretty much says that he did fuck some of them. <laughs> what shitheads? Dummies. Dummies. Wow. That is a great boy. The f the what fact a lousy that job. Oh. You think he's guilty? Yeah. That looks bad, yeah. dude. The fact that he's going to testify at his own trial, it he amazes to. me. He's terrible. He has to. He has had no, for a guy who's like a pretty high-profile job with a pretty high-profile college football team, yeah. he has had zero media training. No. He has no idea he how to answer questions. He doesn't know how to fucking Why would you do the somebody? interview? Yeah. Because he probably thought he could talk his way around it or out of it, and uh, he really did not have... He must be so used to people looking the other way with him mm -hmm. that he doesn't realize that he completely incriminates himself and the people yeah. are just so obsessed with college football that they pretend not yeah. to realize what's going on. And uh, do you honestly think that the prosecution's going to be easier on him than, than <laughs> Costas was? <laughs> They're going to fucking slam him, ask him questions about everything he said, and, and, and he's going to have to explain what he meant by that? Fuck. 
And you, can, you can tell the way he talks that it, it only takes like a few questions before oh. he starts doubling up on his words. And... He just has no clue how to talk and, and sound innocent of these charges. And I think Costas, though, was amazing in that interview. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He went after him, man. He, there was nothing soft about that interview. Well, it sure isn't going to be a soft interview when it's the prosecution uh, no. nailing him on the stand like that because, wow. But Costas, you think, being a sports guy or an NBC guy, would give him a few softball questions. Fucking... Brutal, man. Yeah. I was very, I was like, man, Costas really went after him mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. Jesus. How much his lawyers have felt after Sandusky did that interview with Bob Costas? Horrible. Mm -hmm. He's putting him on the stand. If that interview was good, he would not be on the stand. Because I think they wanted that because they want the jury to hear him denying it. Yeah. They want the jury to hear him going, no, I didn't do that without him testifying. So they get it into evidence, however they do it. He stunk so bad. It's too damaging. Yeah, there's yep. no way that those words can represent him in that trial. And they may not have counted on the fucking amount of damaging testimony from these kids or these guys now from when they were kids. Breaking yeah. down. It's really hard to counteract grown men breaking down. on the It's like there's something inherently that you know. Yep. That man is telling the truth. Like when you see a guy bawling and saying like, yeah, that guy fucking did what he did in the shower. Bloodied my hiney. <laughs> Dude, that's really hard to pass off as a fake. Yeah, yeah. That's a guy crying. Because guys try not to cry in the, you know. And even though it's your job and everything, like, how are you okay with yourself as that guy's defense? Like, how can you really muster up, you know, defending him with all your ability? It is amazing that there's never been a case where a lawyer will not defend somebody. They always, no matter how despicable it is, yeah. they do have a right to legal counsel. And people will represent the most disgusting Fucking dirtbag. Well, yeah. they have to. In fairness to lawyers, if they don't provide an adequate defense, yeah, they'll the ju I think they'll be sanctioned or whatever by the judge. Yeah, they yeah. The, the judge will 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 move to have action taken against them if he feels that they're mailing it in. That's the, a the, vigorous defense. You have to, or yes. the judge yeah. will come after you because it undermines the whole legal system if you if you're not defending your client. You have to defend them. It never looks good when you're fucking lawyer quits yeah <laughs> it's like well we're leaving we have different ideologies uh, you know he's guilty and i don't want to defend him <laughs> one time i was in a case right and my lawyer just yeah. freaked out and he told the judge you're out of order this whole trial's out of order that's from a movie it never happened in real life <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not it, you I was never, on trial. You've never been on trial. Fuck you. Anything. Yes, I have it. No, you have it. Fuck you. You're out of order. The whole trial's out of order. No, they didn't say that. That Chip. didn't happen. <laughs> Chip trying to, <laughs> trying to get into the conversation. But it Chip's, happened. Chip's way into the conversation is like he has to be cooler than anybody else. Oh, he's yeah, talking yeah, yeah, like yeah. He's got to have the course. best story. Yeah, the best. <laughs> Sandusky is in fucking yeah. trouble, man. He's going to be in trouble. This uh, son of a bitch is really... Yeah. Oh, I hope he testifies for. Yeah, well, I, I can't wait to hear what he uh, what he says. I, I'd love to hear the audio of it, but they don't uh, they don't do that uh, where he's being um, in Pennsylvania. I guess they, they do it in Florida. They love yeah. to televise trials in Florida, but not in Pennsylvania. Uh, another thing, boy, did you uh, uh, with the Twitter? Did you see a Whitney Cummings uh, fucking Twitter last night? I did not. No. Holy mother of God! Someone hacked it. Oh, and, no. oh, boy. Can we see it? It, uh, it looked as though she really did not like black people. Oh. oh. Did you hack her Twitter? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people were saying. <laughs> and uh, it just amazes me how dumb people are because she was getting people that were retweeting and saying, uh, you're terrible. I can't believe you're such a racist. <laughs> like, not knowing she was hacked. What's this say? That's not one. That's bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did they clean him up? They might have cleaned him up. But still got to be up. out there somewhere. Yeah, I'm looking. Like, why would Whitney Cummings do that? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, somebody fucking completely hacked her site and just dropping end bombs. Oh, yeah, that's not Whitney. Fucking, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, they really, really twisted it, though. I've never seen such a, a great Twitter hack in my life. Really? Oh, because they were brutal. Like, it went right from her, you know, hey, uh... I'm just hanging out, having some dinner, and then it's just like, oh, and she apparently um, hates black people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Whitney's Twitter account hack. Did it? Um, did it make the news? Any of the news sites? Yeah. I did see that. Yeah. 
When I saw it last night, I was just like, oh, boy, somebody's got to fucking report on this. Yeah, there's got to be somewhere. Did anybody, is there Re any callers up my Retweets and stuff. Probably some retweets. Here we go. There we go. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Let's see some of these. Whitney Cummings, it's, it's C. What's uh, tweets? Uh, oh, but wait, it, it's, she's saying it at, there's a couple of I-L-Y, I-L, what does that mean? And then there's one, are niggers considered class, all in capital letters? Yeah. And then, um, oh, it's the hashtags. Yeah. Raztab, at Raztab, whoever that is. And then the, uh, the hashtags are thank niggers and then. Clan VR C L A N. I don't know what that's a that's, connection to something. Yeah, that's a website. That okay, was, and Brock. I, no. th th these are not really good because they're no, not. They're, they're not really going off. But yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, well, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying that this is what the, whatever is on the page. Uh, uh, yeah, she. Um, that's the, you know obviously that's not her. Hacked. And then I finally saw one that said, uh, yeah, "Oh, I've been hacked." So she got it back. How'd she get it back? I don't know. They they took over. They replaced our picture with, like, their little emblem for hacking. It's like one of those little hacker organizations. You must have to contact Twitter and then help. How and do like, you contact them? She's verifying the celebrity. You so have she to send knows. them a letter in triplicate. Uh, it's got to be written and mailed regular posts. You're verified, That would take, right? long. That would take a long I am verified. Now. I'm not verified. You're not? No. It seems like a big pain in the ass to do. Dane Cook helped me. I want to get verified. For what? Oh, Who would pretend to be you? There's been not Sam impersonators. There haven't been. Mm. Yes, there have. I, I really honestly don't. There's too much work behind it. What do you have to do? You got to like write in. What do you got to write him a letter? I don't know. I think you got to know somebody like a Mason. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, you got like in the like, being. Why are you going to be them? making bricks? No. See. Freemason. See? <laughs> no. It's not uh, if you. Oh, is that her regular tweets? Or are those the hacked ones? Oh, that's the regular ones, yeah. Yeah. People are saying that her, her hacked tweets are more interesting than, <laughs> than her regular tweets. Some of the people on the... Because they're horribly I racist. don't follow Whitney, so I don't know what she does on Twitter, but... Yeah. I know it ain't that. Some of the people on the phones are saying that NBC edited it out because it wouldn't have been a fair trial. If on they... the what? On the phones. Oh. Yeah, we have phone callers. Let me, let me, let's, let's grab oh one. Oh, my God. Okay, let's try go to Joe. Oh. Here we go. You want to go join? I wondered if that was true, but I don't think that they uh, worry about that. Let's go. This is the caller test. Yeah. Hey, Joe yeah. from Maryland. Hi, Joe. I was just playing devil's advocate that that might be a possibility that NBC edited that out because there'd be no possibility to get a fair trial and then hand it over to the prosecution that, hey, there's an admission here of guilt. I think I, I know what you're saying, but I don't think NBC News would give a shit about that. They no, the never press, care about that. You're probably right. You're probably right. The press doesn't have to uh, edit themselves because it might uh, taint a jury. They never do that. It might be a legal department. But department. you're playing the devil's advocate. Ah! Yeah! Put lifts on the little boys so they look like teenagers. Some lifts. <laughs> <laughs> But there might be a legal department above their uh, news department that says, hey, you can't air this. No. Yes, you can. if, no. Somebody, if somebody goes on TV and admits no. guilt, you should allow... I mean, there's, there's no reason. You, you, the press doesn't have to edit themselves in any way, shape, or form because they think it might be a biased trial. Yeah. Oh, well. That wouldn't be NBC's fault. That would be his fault for saying it. Stupid caller, but not a completely... Um, off, but it wasn't annoying. It didn't make me mad taking that call. It wasn't a bad caller, but he was totally wrong. Yeah. Uh, let, let's try Eric in Jersey, since we're to just okay. pounding the phones now. Okay. Yeah. Eric. Hey, uh, Eric. Yeah. Good morning. What's hey. What's up? What do you What do you got uh, today? Well, this is the second time that they screwed up. They screwed up with the Zimmerman too. You know, with the when he was on online with the nine one one operator. Really? Yeah. I didn't hear that. Really? Come on, Anthony. Where have you been? You know what? I, he's saying about the editing. They fucked up the edit Yeah. Uh, with that, and they yeah. did fuck up, and they edited this wrong, too. And MSNBC mm. just edited something uh, with Mitt Romney talking. The Romney uh, talking about uh, Wawa. And, uh, you know, Do we have Wawa, that? I didn't yeah. hear that. But that's all under the umbrella of NBC News. Yes. And man, they better stop fucking around with that stuff. They're, they have no credibility at, at all right now. They're getting right a now. terrible reputation. They're a completely horrible, biased fucking uh, news organization. 
Yeah, the Romney thing, um, if you remember, he was talking about Wawa. Yeah. And uh, he's mentioning some things, and it kind of sounds silly, and they wanted him to sound out of touch uh, because he was talking about you pressing buttons, and the sandwich comes out, and it's amazing. And then they stopped it, but he was trying to use it as an example of uh, technology and innovation and uh, the private sector and how uh, they're they're doing things. And he just he messed up one part because he did say a, like a touch tone keypad at one point, yeah, which yeah. does make him sound like an ass. But I, I get like when you just look at that clip out of context and then the whole thing in context, you give right. him the pass. You go, okay, he was just talking. He had a, a he had a reason to talk about it because of what he said after it. Yeah. But when you take what he said after it and cut it out. He just sounds like he's babbling on about some wacky new modern buzzers and lights things he saw. Like he's never been to a supermarket. Before. Right. That's yes. Yes. Me. And that's what they did. What is the? Uh, let's hear the. Do we have both versions? Yes. This okay. is the MSNBC version. I get the feeling. Take a look at this. That Mitt Romney has not been in too many uh, too many Wawas along the roadside in Pennsylvania. <sighs> I was at Wawa's. I wanted to order a sandwich. You press a little a touch tone keypad, all right? You just touch that, and you know, it's, the sandwich comes out. You touch this, touch this, touch this. Go pay the cashier. There's your sandwich. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> so so they cut it off, and then they just start laughing. But. You know, when you cut it off like that, you take away what he was trying to get. And I fell for it. I, I saw that clip right. yesterday, and I was like, "Oh, what an what asshole!" What an idiot! Yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing. <laughs> it was off like a dolt. At least so. people know Fox is slanted one way. Everybody knows that. But you mention MSNBC, and people go, no. "Oh, it's on no. Fox! Here, Fox!" <laughs> Let's hear the original version. This is yeah. the full version. It's, this it's is a taped much on longer, a, by the way. On a, so I cut it down, but it's taped. Oh, on you edited it. Oh, I did some edited <laughs> by Sam Roberts. See what Sam did to it. Just the heads and tails. Oh. I was at it was. I wanted to order a sandwich. You press a little a touch tone keypad, all right? You just touch that, and you know, the sandwich comes in. You touch this, touch this, touch this. Go pay the cashier. There's your sandwich. It's amazing. People in the private sector learn how to compete. It's time to bring some competition to the federal government and to get it smaller and have to respond to the customers, which are you. I got to interrupt. That It wasn't a good editing job, Sam, because he, he, he used that Wawa thing as a point of how there's a lot of different sandwich uh, uh there's a lot of different places to get a sandwich. Yeah. And so what, what sets maybe Wawa apart from everybody else is that they innovated. They took it to the next level, and, and they made it a lot easier for right. the customer. And he was trying to make a point about uh, just consolidating and trying to make something easy when a lot of uh, the departments of government make things difficult. And he was just right. trying to boil it down to, like, if we can yep. get it this easy in a fucking sandwich shop, how come we can't get right. it this easy in government? And, and that's the point he was trying to make. But when and it, it just, that and off, then it just got condensed down to Wawa's cool crazy. I right? like the buttons. <laughs> So yeah. they edited Sandusky, they fucking purposely edited Zimmerman yep. to make him look like a racist, and then MSNBC purposely edits Absolutely. Mitt Romney yeah. to make him look stupid. Amazing, right? It's fucking embarrassing. That's embarrassing. It really is. But Terrible. They, they, they continue to do it. I don't know why they have any credibility or why they NBC are, News. Why they're allowed to come get the same freedoms that news organizations are allowed to get. Yeah. You, can't even, you can't even say anything about MSNBC doing this because the minute that you bring up, well, look what they just did, and then they'll go, yeah, well, Fox does it too. Fox. And for some reason that makes it okay. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, let's, let's pretend like it didn't happen simply because they all do it. Yeah. And I've seen a fuck of a lot more uh, liberals being able to come on and give their point of view on Fox than I have conservatives be able to give their point of view on MSNBC. Uh, it really is amazing. Mm. What are you gonna do? Hey, uh, I'm gonna visit the boys' room. I'll go with you because I gotta All piss. Right. Oh, let's play a game. Oh, we're we gonna play. Uh, where's your junk? <laughs> <laughs> let's all touch our cocks. I like to sit on the toilet when I know Anthony's going in, and then hopefully he's like a woozy and he doesn't even know it. He accidentally sits down and shits on my cock. <laughs> Remember when that happened? <laughs> yeah, a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you asses. Be right back. You're listening to The Opie and Anthony Show. The Opie and Anthony Show. Sirius XM. Ooh, what's this? Travel with Gambino. Oh. Do you know what we forgot before? I don't know. I'm Great song. Okay. No, I never forget to touch dicks. Touch I just make myself dicks. wait. It's like a treat I'm looking forward to. A treat. Was uh, There was a texting case. Somebody reminded me on Twitter in Jersey 
of somebody who was twittering her boyfriend and he killed somebody texting and the per or no they injured the person like they, they lost a leg or something so they tried to sue the Whoa. guy obviously the driver and the person texting well, you knew, which you can't do. You just oh can't. Oh, my God. How many fucking, yeah, de degrees of separation you got to uh, go through? That yeah, was there. They, they can't Wow. Because you could say, well, I thought he was going to check the text after he got there. Yeah. And he, he, no matter he, what, you just can't sue someone. It's not yeah, your fucking problem. No. Yeah. I, uh, I've i been guilty of texting while I'm uh, you know driving around. Yeah, me too. I don't like... Uh, Both of you got to stop. I worry about scary. you. It's scary. It is scary when you do it. Yeah. You know, you're like, ah... Uh, I don't want to take my eyes off the road too long. Well, you probably drive at a reasonable speed when you do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, it's the right lane. I'm doing the 30 miles an hour. Good, 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 uh, good. Making sure I'm not tailgating. Good. Sure, sure. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably prefer if you didn't, if you got off your phone while driving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I really don't do it much. Tweeting. Well, it only takes once, doesn't it? There's true. no reason to tweet when you're driving. No. Texting, sometimes you have to. No, you don't. <laughs> I've uh, I've incorporated a lot of shortcuts now into my iPhone. I figured out the shortcut thing where all you do is type in one or two letters and a whole fucking statement will come out. Like, I'll be like, hey, I'm driving. I'll get in touch with you later. Why don't you and I could do that just like DD. I, I have that set for like DD because drive. So you just go DD, and that whole thing comes up, and then you just hit send. Oh, can you do that? Yes! You can hit shortcuts by two letters? Setting up your shortcuts. Yeah, two letters, one letter, it doesn't matter. Like, like fuck, for some reason. It always tries to correct fuck in my phone. So I made fuck the, the shortcut for fuck. <laughs> so that when I put in fuck, it automatically keeps fuck and doesn't change it to something else. Wow. Um, other things like NP for no problem. Oh. Um, I would always put in NP and it would turn to NO. Something people. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> it would turn to NO. So now I have NP as NP. So when you do it, it just comes up when NP. Make, so why not just have NP as no problem yeah. so it says it? Well, because NP is kind of the cool way. What kind of a no douchebag uses an abbreviation for an abbreviation? Yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew how to use shortcuts. That's They're fucking pretty so handy, especially like I said, when you're driving. If you want to get something really quick, you still. I mean, what, what, what's, what are you getting while you're driving that you really need to respond to immediately? Sometimes, let's say for some reason, Club Soda Kenny mm -hmm. is texting me on when I'm on my way in with something. And I have to say, uh, like, okay, got it. I'm driving, seeing a few. He should be calling you if he's concerned with your safety. Because yeah. then you could just, do you have something in your car you could hit? Yeah. Like a, you know, like a... No. I have a shortcut, though, that uh, has a bunch <laughs> of things like this. It goes, uh, uh, I'll be there in five. I'll be there in ten. I'll be there in fifteen. I have a few of those. Uh -huh. And then you just, like, put in uh, B15. And then I'll say, I'll be there in 15. So that way, if I'm um, running a little late, mm -hmm. I let Kenny know I'll be there in 5. I'll be there in 10. I'll be there we in 15. We understand why you'd use it. Yeah. It's <laughs> going on and on. Why am I just going on and on and on? <laughs> Fuck. Shut up. It's called a shortcut. It. How about a shortcut to this conversation, Anthony? <laughs> Jesus Christ, what an idiot. No, I don't mind. The, I didn't mind you saying B15 and B20. But first of all, you listed three, and then you're like, and then there's a time if I'm running late. So I will just, we understand why you would tell right. someone you're running late. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> oh, I'm thrown from that bathroom visit. What I happened? Oh, you don't want to know. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Jimmy shuts the lights out on me. By accident. I, no, I, it wasn't accident. It was such a force of habit. I forgot Anthony was dutying in the. No. Every, you always shut the lights, right? No, every time yes. you're in the bathroom, yeah. any bathroom with Jimmy, he'll when he leaves, he will shut the lights, and now you're just sitting in the dark. <laughs> was it pitch dark? It was pitch black in uh. there, and then somebody because there's no windows. Because then, then somebody walks in and you hear them go, where are the lights out? Like they talk to themselves, where are the lights out? And they get their junk grabbed. Yeah, yeah, and then I, I grab their penis. <laughs> like they, they, they say, why are the lights out? And then you're shitting alone. In the <laughs> you're shitting alone in the corner. <laughs> they probably think you're jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. That's funny. They probably think you're cranking over there. <laughs> That's the guy who cranks his dick. It. I'm they look uh, yanking it. They look at your shoes like oh, that's the guy who fucking pulls his pud uh, in the bathroom. I don't like looking at pe like people seeing your shoes and everything like that. Because you don't want them to know that you're the man making that stink in the fucking in, in the bathroom. Well, that's true.
I saw uh, somebody uh, taking a dump in there the other day, and they, uh, they have, of course, their pants down. And uh, their ID tag is just hanging on the floor, so it's better than even shoes. You're just like, ah, look at that. Bill Williams is taking a shit. Yes. His picture, he's just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to Phil Buttons. <laughs> 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 Nothing makes that resonance sound than a nice toilet bowl. Yeah. It really does make that echoey. <laughs> Some people really have no shame here, too. Like, no. I don't. I don't it's not like, I, I mean, I guess I, I'm from the mentality that I, I guess I should be trying to make as much noise when I'm shitting in there as possible, <laughs> but I don't for, for whatever reason. I just try to keep it classy. But other people, they'll just run in there, and they will just open their assholes up <laughs> at fucking full volume, and I just never understood that. Like, you know I'm in there, you know, you, or, or you don't what care, obviously. What are you talking about? You fart in the yeah, office fart, all morning Yeah, shitting is different. Long. Shitting is different. Oh, you make shitting noise at your desk oh, all morning. Poo-poo is different. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Danny farts all morning. Yeah, that's true. So <laughs> yeah, loudly. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Voluminously. Yeah. So you don't think Blue's argument about the... No, no. dude is different, dude. What do you mean keep it classy and I recognizing about, other people? Listening, there. To you, someone, listening to someone's fart is funny. More, no, it's listening not. to someone take a shit That's is why weird. Travis and me both started ignoring him because we were hoping it would just stop. No, and you're stop. amongst friends when we'll you do it stop. in the office and it's just all strangers in the bathroom. You no, know, he's amongst people who used to be his friends until he insisted on farting all morning long. Yeah, you know what? That might have something to do with it too. Like if I knew you were in the bathroom, I would shit louder. Oh, okay. I don't like the moan either in there. You hear like... <laughs> you're like Oh, <laughs> really? Are you getting that much pleasure out of it? I saw a guy run in the other day, and he ran in like no time for fucking malarkey. <laughs> no time for love, Dr. Jones. <laughs> the door closed. Was it e -rock? And, and you hear, no. <laughs> and you hear the fucking, the, the, the hurried shuffle of the bell. Buckle, buckle, the buckle. Bell clang, buckle. clang. And he's tap dancing at the same time. And fucking literally, you knew there was no time for paper placement. Just buckle. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, he must have been dying for a commercial break. <laughs> the, fast, dude, the fastest shitter I've ever seen in my life was Eastside Dave. Oh, back, man. Back at XM, and I knew it was him. his pants. <laughs> because he, he, would, he, had, he always wore Converse All-Stars, and he would, he would pull the laces so tight that you couldn't even see. It looked like a scar. It didn't even look like shoelaces. <laughs> and uh, I'm in the bathroom. And, like, before, in the time it took for one decent-sized log to just come out of my ass and drop into the... He had his pants down, he shat and wiped, and he was out. Dave wow. was also it was 10 seconds. It was also a dead giveaway when Dave was in the stall on 57th Street because he was the only one that brought a porno magazine and lube <laughs> into the stall with Did him. Really? Always. Was he, he jacking off in he, the... Uh, yeah. He always wow. used to take those little bottles of lube that they would send us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used yeah, to yeah. come into our office, get a little bottle of lube in one of the magazines that they would send Steve, and he'd go into the bathroom and he'd jerk off. Really? Yeah, always. Sometimes he'd go jerk. down to the third floor because he thought the bathrooms were more comfortable. Well, the work jerk is for the young. Yeah, Dave used to work jerk all day work long. Work jerk. How would you get down to the third floor bathroom? I never knew about that. This, you just yeah. take the stairs, you go down, and the doors go all the way to the floor in that bathroom. And he'd be holding the magazine and loop? <laughs> yeah, because the doors go all the way to the floor, the stall doors. <laughs> oh, oh, very private. In that bathroom. Yeah. Oh, I wish I would. Uh, it's amazing. I'm so actually bummed. I didn't off. know about that. So yeah. I could go shit there right this now. This is the third floor. That's nice where Eric shit. used to get his snacks, right? Yeah, and then oh. they, they used to set out, like, oh. uh, tables, like, I guess little buffet-type tables of, like, you know, fruit platters and things like that, and Eric, and cookies and stuff. And Eric used to go down to the third floor, and he used to steal their, like, lunch <laughs> I meats. I never knew that. Yeah, it was cuts. one of those oh, offices that they used for architects, but it was always a different group architects. coming in from somewhere around <laughs> oh, the country. Man, and they'd have a whole, uh, like, a whole spread. So you He would know, go down for his shit and come back down. with a sandwich. This sounds and sandwiches fucking... sandwiches and cookies and everything. Oh, just a <laughs> fucking everything. amazing... What a glutton. Oh, he really is. Just sniffing out food like a, a pig looking for truffles. Is <laughs> 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 that he's just a pig looking for lunch? <laughs> oh, oh E-Rod. Oh, I got it, Sam. Thank did you oh. hear Danny called you a pig? Is <laughs> e the only thing. That's right, there's cheese. <laughs> but you did do it. You called him a pig. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Oink, oink. Little, little bit, little bit. Fat pig. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so what you call them, I mean. <laughs> you wouldn't call them that, would you? No, it's mean to just call them a big, fat pig. Oh. <laughs> That's what Danny did. I see what you're doing there. That was mean. I see what you're doing right there. I didn't say that. Huge, enormous, yeah. big, fat pig. Yeah, that really is uncalled for. Don't do it again, Danny. Yeah, it's something about that seat there. Mm. You said that yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> still true. How many times have you done the oh, same joke? He got to laugh. Just... You laughed at him yesterday. <laughs> He's trying to exactly. get some Oh, I almost forgot. Good morning, sexy. 
<laughs> oh, I did. I did that. I, did that I didn't hear it. Yeah, yeah, it was when we came back from break. Oh, what was the, what was his thing? It was nothing. He just had a bed on. <laughs> That's like, oh, okay. someone's sloughing off. I know, right? So Someone's thinks... on fucking vacation uh, Opie, with Opie gone. O Opie actually was ta yesterday, and he said at the doctors, he went to the doctors, he was in the waiting room, and he actually shit onto his balls. Oh, no. oh man. Onto the back of his balls. Shit onto the back of his balls? That's yeah. the problem, right? He's shitting everywhere? Is Li that right? He's been liquid shitting. He has oh, like a, wow. a parasite. And, um... She's E-Rock. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just been nothing but, like, butterscotch-colored liquid oh, shit. Oh! Yeah. Looks like wow! He's, looks like he's wearing a butterscotch uh, skirt. Oh, that's brutal. That's gross. Oh, that is me. horrible. Man, I could use some soupy. Get some soup for the fucking soup? boss! What flavor? You know what? what I'm tired of the fucking... Turkey, turkey chili. chili. Of course you are. And I'm kind of tired of that fucking chicken noodle. Yeah, why wouldn't uh, you be? What else do they got? Vegetable cum. <laughs> Vegetable cum. They have so a many other toenail oh, medley. <laughs> I like the fucking... <laughs> Everybody's talking about food. I hid that shit real quick. That looked really good, man. <laughs> my, my cup of munchkins. Cup of oh. munchkins. They have a cup of Damn. munchkins. Did you like a no. munchkin, James? I have a like, raging I heart on right now. Really? I'd love to shove it in that munchkin thing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I please put my dick in your donuts? <laughs> Do it. <laughs> For at least sure, I'll spit more donuts. Yeah, I'd love to not? see your dick in these like donuts. Great. Uh, what what other uh, kind of flavored soups do they have, Kenny? You want me to call the hotline with the choices? Why don't you do that? <laughs> I would love to know. Because I've just, uh, since I've been here, uh, it's been turkey, chili, and chicken noodle. Yeah, pull your I pants up I might be missing higher. some lobster bisque. <laughs> some some mulligatawny. <laughs> some jambalaya. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at his pants. They're horrible. So yeah. he's kind of staring down Jim like Jesse Ventura did in the doorway there. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, my that pants. Looks a little huh? dangerous. How, your clothes are huge. Yeah, you have big clothes, but you're a big guy. I know that. I'm not... <laughs> he has to look at himself to confirm yeah, that he's yes. huge. <laughs> it is indeed a big shirt. I am big. <laughs> is this on, Sam? <laughs> it's on. It's on. No I buy me. big attire to downplay my muscularity. Well, it's, it's have to do with your tires. Fucking home Double bias ply. What's that? Tire. Oh, that's going. <laughs> I'm going to get your soup. All right, Kenny. Thanks, man. Do you really want to downplay your muscularity? Yes. Why? Yeah, you really do wear loose-fitting clothing. Why? I, I I don't have to wear tight clothing. Do you, Can you fight better in loose clothing? Yes. Yeah? Move faster? Yes. Don't have to worry about ripping your pants and having the guy go, ah-ha. And you like people to underestimate you. Oh, like maybe you're not as fit as uh, you are. No, I, I never underestimate anybody. But they might underestimate you. I don't know. It's a good tactic. And you like cheap suits. Yes. You like a... <laughs> 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 I've seen some Master Poe videos. <laughs> you wore loose clothes. And no, you there's like to some muscularity. Is that really good, this video? It's a nunchucks. <laughs> he, is, what is he spinning? It's not nunchucks, is it? Yeah. I think it's just a stick. I think it's just a stick. It's a pointer. It's like what <laughs> it's the uh, skewer. It's, it's what the conductor. Is what he the dancing? Has. He's dancing. He's sunglasses. Opera. Right. He was great. That no, was nunchucks. No, now he's got two sticks. Those are nunchucks, aren't they? I, I think, I think, think they're, they're, they're actually size. They're nunchucks. But you can't you can't tell because he's he's moving so fast. Those are nunchucks. Oh, are they? He was good though. But I don't see that they're connected by Those a chain or anything. I guarantee you they, they are. They just look like yeah. solid sticks. I think they so. look like size to me. Wait, I think they're just solid sticks. Yes. Are they? He was an expert swordsman. <laughs> I'm actually wrong. They were sticks. Ah, swords. Man, was he a I've never seen somebody person. make more of his own sound effects than oh. this guy. The only, the only person that made more sound effects for himself is probably Hulk Hogan. Doosh. Oh, he, he would smack himself to make like impact sounds oh, and stomp right. his feet on the floor. Yeah. So it was ridiculous. Why is uh, in this always... video Macho Master Poe just beating himself up with these things? Somehow this is this, somehow this is a demonstration. I, I'm not sure how, but this is somehow a fight He's demo. He's just hitting himself with the thing and jumping around a lot in front of a. Oh, he just did a roll. <laughs> I never like, understood this, and I never understood where he would show you he would show you moves like this, but he would have to show you in very controlled environments. Yeah. Like, oh, let me show you all these moves that I can do if, if the other person is moving in slow motion, letting me do them. But, to me, that's not a fucking... I don't see how that's a demonstration of anything. And he he's in, like, he fast fighting. motion. He's just yeah. like he's... It's like it's curly going... Whoop, it's, whoop, like, whoop, it's like if I, <laughs> if I could stop time, this is how I'd beat you up. Right. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to move, but I can move in fast motion. 
I just think he could fight, though, man. I, I think oh, that. Yeah, but you know what, Jim? I've never seen one single video of him doing anything. Fighting. Well, Mar said he was he was good, though. Mar, uh, Mar said he knew uh, what he was I doing. Didn't, I'd like to see. I'd like to know if Mars ever actually saw him fight. Oh, not spar. Shit. Not spar, and not doing that fake. I'm slapping my my fucking jacket bullshit. <laughs> But actually, he would actually fight. It's like fast motion Macarena. He would do. <laughs> Where's Mars? Mars always vouched I'm for him. I'm out they were today. Good friends. Mars is out is today. I think. Right? Uh, I think. Uh, where is he? he? Yeah. He's probably having fucking anal fissures sewn oh, shut. He's fucking. He's fucking Travis, who's also. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're so fucking gay lovers. Damn, that's a good anus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, I want to hear this uh, Rodney King fiance nine one one call. Oh God, yeah. This is, uh, as they say, chilling. Yeah. It's chilling. There are still people suspicious of her, though. Yes. Um, the police are investigating it, but uh, they say that it doesn't seem to be a sign of foul play, but a lot of his friends are saying foul play. Some uh, people were saying that he was going to leave his fiance. Really? That was the plan. She may have caught wind of that. Oh, and, and shoved him in the, in the pool or something? People are saying. Cracked him over the head. But, but he he's apparently was a, a, a swimmer. He, he swam at night. And maybe he, he was uh, drunk. Maybe she gave him succinylcholine like The Exorcist 3. Oh. And then shoved him in the pool. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And she didn't go into the pool to get him out. No. She said she tried to wake him up with a shovel. You'll hear that in the call. Um, I guess she grabbed a shovel and poked at him when he's just at the bottom of the pool. I don't think when you're at the bottom of the pool, you're asleep. <laughs> it's not so like you wake up and go like... <laughs> 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 You're yawning and bubbles are coming out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Under the sea. <laughs> like I'm doing a Little Mermaid reference. Love it. Um, yeah, let's hear it, man. Yeah, let's hear this 911 call. Please. Oh my God. Is he breathing? Hope not. Please hurry up, please, please, please. Where are you in, ma'am? I'm in Rialto, California. Hurry up, please, please, please. Rialto, California. Oh, my God, please. It's a home. What is this one of you calling from? I'm calling from California, please. Please, I'm not going to try to wake him up, but I'm jumping in the pool. Because I don't know how to swim. She just said that. She was like, she's like, I haven't jumped in the pool because I don't know how to swim. It's her house and her pool, apparently. And Rodney King was uh, over there. And uh, it's so odd, the thought of having a pool and not being able to swim. Unless It's yeah. like having a bear trap in your backyard. Why the fuck would you have this dangerous thing, this pool of water that you can't fucking go in? Mm -hmm. Maybe to shoot music videos like MC Hammer's. Oh, oh. Right with his big dick. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big dick at the bottom of the pool. I'm so glad I got to turn you guys on to MC Hammer's oh, big fat fantastic. Dick. <laughs> his big fucking shaking dick. Yeah, and his fucking leopard skin underpants. <laughs> that looked great. That it was like a pant leg That for dick it. has been making me laugh for... Well, I don't know, 18 years. <laughs> I'm glad to share it with you guys. An amazing <laughs> dick. Uh, yeah, you hear the rest of this uh, call here in 911. Oh, my God! 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 Hurry up! I gotta call my mom. I called his mom. This is crazy! Ma'am, ma'am, how old is he? This is crazy! Oh, my God! Come on, hurry up! Please, 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 Please hurry up, please. Okay. Oh my god. It's not like they're stopping at fucking McDonald's. Yeah, sure. On their way. How old is he? Rodney King, the guy that got beat by the police. Oh. Okay, how old is he? Isn't that odd? Hold on. Isn't that odd that she had to say that? I think like, she said, who is he? I thought that she thinks the operator said, who is he? It's, it's, yeah, she said, she uh, said how, how old, old is, he? is he? But I think she said, like, who is he? But why would you, you just go, it's Rodney King? She's you just know. panicking. She's like, yeah, I'm trying to r figure out why she's not being rational. She's looking at her fiancé at the bottom of a pool. Yeah, why isn't she, uh, yeah. She's trying to get him out with a shovel. I don't know. Yeah. I think Club Soda Kenny's on with a oh, soup update. Oh, a soup update? Let's hear. Let's hear. They won't put him on hold. Uh, oh, just why won't they put him on hold? Talking to him in the other room. Oh, what is it? What does he have to say? Nothing. Okay. Uh, hello? 
I have the soup choices. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, Kenny. Thank you so much. What are the choices? What are your soups today? Well, if you don't want turkey chili or you don't want chicken noodle, the only other two choices don't are... Say, don't say split pea. Tuscan grilled vegetable <laughs> and, and chicken and eggplant and beans. And you're a cantaloupe. Oh! <laughs> Tuscany. Yeah. Uh, Tuscan what? Tuscan grilled vegetable. Tuscan grilled <laughs> vegetable soup. What's that, from elephant tusks? You know what? Mm. Yeah. I'm going to try that. Okay, come right up. Thank you, sir. Bye. Oh, Tuscan raider soup. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> see it's Star Wars. Yeah. He's like, yeah, right? No. Not Chet. Um, oh, back to uh, the audio. Okay, how old is he? He's 47 years old. He's not moving. He's at the bottom of the swimming pool. I don't know. I was asleep. Is uh, he out now at the pool? What? He's still in the pool. Yes, I was sleeping off the hour or something fall like the table, and then I looked over, and then I went to find him. He's at the bottom of the swimming pool. He's still there. Please okay. hurry up. They're coming. Please. They're already coming. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> oh shit! Are you able to go in the pool and get him? No, I can't. I can't lift him up. He's at the bottom. I'm gonna open the door. Oh my God! She can't Hurry get up, him. Please. It's fucked up. Oh my God! Oh, okay, I'm They're coming as quick as they can. They're coming to get him. Oh my God! Oh my God! And is there anybody in the <laughs> What? Ma'am, is there anybody in the, in the pool to get him? No! I, how, how can I get him? He's like, I want to do that with the house. He's at the bottom. I didn't try to wake him up. He's just floating at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> oh my God! How about you jump in? And I'm trying to... How about you jump in? You like lock his arm, and then you you kind of just move your arms and legs. You so can't you get swim to the shallow though, end. That's like that's like jumping into a, a pit of fire for most people. <laughs> Jesus, well, for most people. <laughs> you know, whoever can't swim. Jesus. Well, if she's telling the truth, like if she really is just panicking, that's horrible. You can feel the like uh, the mounting panic. Yes. I'll get him out. Like because you know every the, second he's down there, you're thinking like he's there's dying. no. He's dead. Was he dead when they pulled him out? Or he's he... dead already. I think so. Bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they pulled him out. I mean, please. I'm going to run to pee real quick. The I know how okay. He's been at the bottom of the fucking pool for for like 20 minutes. He you was down the, there. Like your adrenaline would just kick in and you just jump in and learn how to swim right then. It's not yeah. tough. Yeah, yeah like f some kind of heroic move. Just doggy She's watched paddle. people swim. And that wasn't a, doggy that wasn't a big pool. Like, what, what, no, what, I saw what a picture the deepest of it. it could possibly have been? Yeah, it couldn't have been eight that feet. deep. Maybe eight feet at most. At most. And, and Because, I mean, you can't have a... I mean, that, 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 would, that would be some, like, in... Uh, what do they call that? A grade or whatever on, that the pool is on when it goes down. Because if it's so small, you can't go from, like, walking in on the stair part to, to 12 feet in the matter right, in a span right. of six or eight feet. Giant and, fucking fall off. Yeah, it's probably, like... And it's probably, you know, a matter of feet of dragging him before you're able to put your head back above water. Yeah. Because it's shallow, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. She she really was panicky. She was totally panicky. Didn't understand that she should probably jump in, yeah. try to get his head above the water. You can't just say, please hurry, please hurry. I hit him with a shovel and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. She fucking poked him with a shovel to try to get him uh, awake. Man, that's fucking panicky. Any more of that left? Yeah. What's the mom? He was at the bottom of the door. A shovel. And so I need to wake him up and he's not moving. He's okay. got in the bottom. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Oh, no. You're crazy. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Do not go in the water unless it's safe to do that. I don't know what. No. I understand. They're coming to you now. They're coming to you. This is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, my God. They're coming to you now. <laughs> oh, she's losing it now. Oh, my God. Oh I think my she God. realizes now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. She knows now. 
god. It's too late. Oh my god. Oh my god. Please. This is crazy. I gotta call my mom. I gotta call her mom. Please. I gotta call my mom. I gotta call her family. <laughs> She's losing it. It's over, Johnny. She knows that he's been down there too long. They're coming back. Monster laugh. <laughs> Officer, please, he jumps in, starts hitting him. <laughs> yeah, she was happy to see the cops then, huh? They showed up. Officer, please. Did they just the jump in and grab him, right? That's fucking yeah, yeah, they jumped right in, grabbed him, brought him up. Man, she must feel uh, pretty terrible that she wasn't able to go in there. That's got to be very frustrating to look and see somebody. You not have a fucking pool. You have a pool. You got to be able to swim. Yeah. It literally is like fucking, you know, you're, you have something really dangerous in your yard. Just it's there and it's horribly dangerous. It's like having a bear trap in your yard. I said that. <laughs> I just wanted to steal it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that was the call, and uh, of course they couldn't uh, couldn't revive him. Wow, he was down there for quite some time. Well, they said he was a swimmer, so it's like I wonder maybe maybe he something else, maybe a heart attack. And they'll figure it out, whatever it is. It she might have been a heart attack. She said that she heard some kind of banging sound, like on the table, like a banging sound on the table, and then heard a splash, and then she went out. So maybe he had a heart attack and fell in the pool. Well, or maybe, or maybe somebody smashed his head against the fucking table and threw him in the pool. How close was he to the fucking... How close was he to the table that he would hit it and then fall in the pool? 3.5 meters. Oh, that would make perfect sense. I'm glad you had that measurement handy. No idea. Because I didn't know. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but you can hear her panic, man. That's oh. fucking frustrating. You, you can hear... I think At the beginning of the call, I don't think it's sunk in yet. Well, Rodney did. <laughs> oh. I don't think it's sunk in to her yet that, that like, he was... He's dead, you know? And then as the call went on, <laughs> your rest in pool it was very R I K rest in pool. That made me laugh very hard, even though it was fucking horrible. Uh, and, and the old, can't we all get a long snorkel? <laughs> poor, poor fella. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she, she, uh, I think by the end of the call, she realized, hey, a human is down there that long. There ain't no fucking way. He's, How long uh, was he there? A few minutes, right? Even for the length of the call. I mean, that call was four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes underwater? You, you're done. Well, I don't know. David Blaine did it for like two weeks or something. Oh, did he? No, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, let me tell you something about David Blaine. I don't mention his name. He's magic. <sighs> He's not magic. He's not really magic. He just does illusions. <laughs> illusions. I was watching um, that uh, show that... Uh, Let's fuck over the magicians, it's called, I think. Oh, the magician's greatest secrets finally revealed. Finally revealed. Those are those old, they were like Fox specials yeah. years ago, and now they replay them on oh, Channel 9. Stink. Yeah. Are they what? bad? The well, masked you know, I just remember that like, they reveals would, all. They'll show you magic tricks that you never knew or gave a shit about, and then they show yes. you how they're done. It's like, wow, cool. I've been watching, uh, there was a kind of a marathon la uh, last night, so I watched maybe three episodes, and um, it, they're all the same. Like, they're, they're all the same basic trick that they expose. Yeah. It's like, okay, here's one where the woman has to slide into a little space in a box that you don't think is there because it's an illusion. And then there's the big one where they ha make a, a giant dump truck disappear right before your eyes. Like but they, they pull a curtain up around it. They could have just called the show Trapdoors and Mirrors. Right. That's it's called every... Trapdoors and Mirrors because that's every single trick. How do they yeah. do the fucking dump truck disappear? <clears throat> it's amazing. They had a dump truck, and it's surrounded by a fence. Can we see it? Yeah. I would like to see that. Because I, I, I'm, I'm a boy who loves magic. Mm. And I always wonder, how do they do it? And so when I go to a magic show, which oh. I do a lot. Do you? I'll, uh... As soon as they start the trick, I'll be like, tell me how you do it! And I'll clap loudly. Just no, you won't. <laughs> annoy them. Gosh. Unbelievable. Now, they, um, what they do is 
There's, let's say there's a big dump truck. Sure. And there's a fence around the dump truck. Sure. So there's literally a the fence is. around there's it. There's a dump truck with a fence around it? Very high, like a 12-foot high fence and a gate. And the, they lock the gate. Why, are they, why is there a gate around it? I don't it? know, because the magician was in there, like, waving around the truck to show there was no w wires or anything. And uh, then they close the, uh, the gate, lock it with a big lock. Then they get a bunch of people, uh, witnesses, that stand around the gate. And then they drop a white curtain around the whole gate, right? And, um, and uh, then uh, the curtain lifts up a little bit, and they show the truck, right? And then it goes back down, and then he does a little more mumbo-jumbo. And then the curtain lifts up a little bit again, and you realize, hey, I don't see any tires or anything there. What the fuck? And then he goes, ah, and the whole thing drops down, the curtain, and everything's gone. Here it is. It's amazing. Oh, my God. There's a mass magician. Yes. That's a big truck. Yes, it's a giant truck. Those girls keep popping up right when he needs them. He has no mask. He's the narration no is horrible, and it's the Watch guy that, that was uh, the chief inspector on uh, X Files. Yeah. Just in case. All right, can we fast forward? I don't need to see this asshole climbing on the truck. Yeah. We've established it's a truck. Yeah. He he goes into the window to show there's no no nothing with the uh, steering and oh, things like that. Stinks. All right, time for the match. This guy's a total douche. So, a group of spectators is invited to surround I like the episode when it was starting to run out of ratings, and they were like, on this episode, the masked magician reveals his identity. And he took off his mask, and it was just some guy he never even who heard cares? of. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah, Who that. gives a fuck who he is? It's like some black dude, right? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. never heard of him. It's like a black magician? What? Who's this yeah. guy? You're like, oh. So They're all standing around the truck. Yeah. Now, is this really outdoors or just supposed to be? Uh, it, uh... They'll do it outdoors. Looks like a soundstage. Yeah, it's a soundstage. The spectators, take one last look. The spectators by the way, all in on it. <gasps> all in on it. These tricks are only done on television. They never right. just do these. The curtain falls. The curtain falls. Now the, the witnesses all join hands around... Because you wouldn't hear the truck if it drove away? Right. Why are they holding hands? For the magician to work his magic. Oh. Yeah, for the magician to work his magic. Make this a little louder. They're all holding hands around a white curtain. This is yeah. awful. A little more conjuring on the part of the magician. Oh, he's conjuring. He's conjuring, he's conjuring things up. The curtain's raising. I guess yeah. the only way out is up. Oh, oh this magician well, it, stinks. It's impressive so far. What's impressive? Nothing. They're holding hands around a curtain. Nothing's impressive so far. What's going on behind that sheet? Trickery. If you want the answer? Is just imagine how they feel. Uh -huh. So close. All oh, right. And yet so far. That this no guy is this horrible. show just sucks. Some yeah. more magic, and the cage rises right oh. off the ground. Oh Ooh. shit! The truck weighs sixty-five thousand pounds. Sixty-five thousand no pounds. I don't see it. I don't either. I don't see Besides, the nobody said anything about a floating truck. Right. Well, that's true. What's happening here? There's no sign of the vehicle underneath. No. But where is it? Where I is don't it? know. I can Again, see legs. The floor is solid yep. concrete, so don't look for any trap doors. Or no. I thought That's a true. trap door swallowed up a really giant yeah, truck. I was looking for a hinge. The suspense is killing <laughs> Me too. Uh -huh. All those lights aren't distracting either. No. Yet another magical wave, and... And? Oh, the, the curtain, curtain just fell. Oh, my God. It's, oh, everything's gone. gone. Goodbye. How'd the curtain Mr. fall Fruba, perfectly into a, tr a rectangle? It's cubes. amazing. And they're running across this. Wait. Can't say that I missed it's gone. Truck, but it's gone without a trace. Those dumb girls. It's so simple. Yeah. Good, right? Uh, it's magical. No, it's not magic. Shut up! It is a dumb, easy man. gag now trick that really has to be went. done on TV. Where's the? Tr where's the? Is it camera tricks? Nope. Oh, they're showing the you. Make this pound truck so they're showing you with the curtain around Yes. Here. Then vanish in the blink of an eye. Okay, they're Amazing. just re-showing the trick. He didn't. He didn't. what really happened. Oh, no. When the trick begins, the magician uh, gives us a tour of the massive truck. Right. Yes. Yes, the truck is real, and it is very heavy. We know. Well, thanks. But the two lovely assistants aren't the only magical they have dicks. hiding in the shadows. <laughs> Cleverly concealed in the truck's payload. Our stagehands. Ah! Uh, taking a rest. They They're disassemble the truck and eat it. Hey guys. <laughs> no? The magician climbs up onto the truck's cab uh -huh. and puts his hand inside. Whenever a magician goes out of his way to show you that there's nothing unusual going on, there always is. Ah! So the truck's driver is hiding inside. Oh, there's a driver. That's one way to avoid a speeding ticket. <laughs> uh -huh. The magician exits the steel cage. The doors are closed. <laughs> 
and the chain is padlocked. Right. It's legit. Yeah. That door will not be opened again. Why are there stagehands? Until the stagehands want to come out and oh. go home. Well, they have work to do. Then the magician takes Once us the on a walk around down. the cage. Aren't they going to disappear? Showing us that it completely encloses the trunk. No. He calls in the witnesses. They pick it up and, and, and slowly tiptoe away with it. Like the Flintstones. Covering the cage. Yeah. As soon as they are hidden from view, the driver and stagehands spring into action. Oh! Climbing out of the truck and moving into position around the perimeter of the they're loud. Yeah, wouldn't they hear them? They but they're all in on it, so it doesn't matter. Oh. That's the gag. Wait. This guy starts the truck up. Outside the cage, the witnesses move What a waste of time. Yes. So that nothing can get past Yes. But why? But something does. Wait a minute. Why? If these spectators look bored to you, it's probably because they've done this trick many times before. Uh -huh. Although they've been presented to you as randomly chosen witnesses, they're actually part of the illusion. It oh. takes In no fact, skill. They're on the payroll. No. And There's no skill bin. It's stupid. You're right. Trick. It's retarded. As the magician appears to make the silk rise, oh. inside the cage, the stagehands make their move. Upon closer inspection, you can see that the entire cage is on wheels. Oh. And it is actually welded to the back of the truck. Ah! Uh -huh. The movement of back the fabric that and the up. lights disguise the movement of the truck as it begins to roll backwards. Oh. But how does the cage move to take this off. taking the curtain with it? Close examination reveals that the silk tape is not connected. Oh to shit, the he's going backwards. Here. Okay. It's actually hung from a steel frame supported by beams and lifted this by the curtain. This is dumb. The curtain's not even on the, the fucking steel cage. Black and hung from the ceiling high above the trunk. See? Okay. When the curtain rises, it is actually lifting off and away from the cage. Ah. And the cage and truck to slip out the back. And this the is actually different than I would have the thought they did it. Really? Slides open. What did you think? Our phony Magic? Move out of the way. Yeah. But and the cage and truck if you're gonna... Out. This is so stupid. This if everybody's gonna be in on it, and your witnesses and everything, why wouldn't you just cut the camera? I right. know! And just right. drive the truck away. If it's just for television, Cut the camera, drive the truck away, go back to the shot and go, Why? Hey, look, they it needed, I'm telling you, because they needed to make it more interesting. This is why big yeah. trucks like this are only seen on TV and never in front of a real live audience. Yeah, so Once the truck is clear what's the, the stage, point? What's the, the point? Move back into place. You want to fool us on television, closed. do it with special the effects. Is ready yeah, for yeah. just animate it, just do a cartoon. Right, the CGI. Yeah. One last time. This is bullshit, this is magic. No, it's not, Chippa. Yes, it is. It's not magic, Chippa. Because then it disappears from behind. A thing I've seen this one. The silk is released from the steel. Are we going to just see it again? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what they do. They just—it's ponderous. This show. Yeah, I Nobody watched, would I watched do about that. three hours of that last night. <laughs> Nobody would do that trick on TV. I would. No, it's he a waste did. of time. It's, he did it. It's a. They, like, but they've shown the disappearing car, truck, horse, elephant trick, and it's always that. They always have where they just pull the curtain up. Back it out. It's never done in front of a live audience. This is stupid. And then there's the body double ones they use. He uses a bloody double. They had a set of uh, hot blonde twins. Yeah. And uh, this girl's in one cage. And this is like supposed to be this transporting thing. So there's a girl in one cage and, oh. and the magician's in the other. Ah. Oh. And uh, they tie the girl up with a red uh, fucking bandana. Tie her arms up. And then they lift up these curtains around the magician and the woman. And the second it goes up, boom, the curtains come back down. She's gone. And she's now next to the magician, uh, fucking like 20 feet away. Yeah, but the only problem is she has to kill her clone every night. Uh -huh. And doesn't know whether yes. that's spoilers. The great Danton. Oh, no. Oh, the great really Danton. Really I'll be across the street at the Pantages. A room full of dead wolverines. Yes, what dead wolverines <laughs> in fucking fish tanks? What a terrible show! Yeah, yeah, well, that's yeah a, horrible. I've Chris Angel's show, like when he was doing the Mind Freak show, like you can't Mind do Mind Freak. What is 1985? A magic series because no. you just run out of tricks. Like I remember one, he was walking on water, and it was a pool in Las Vegas, and everybody was like, "Well." You know, obviously nobody's in on this, and he's really walking across the pool. Yeah. But you could clearly see that he had simply gotten a clear acrylic, yeah, you know, bridge. board that he just put, a, they put across it. And their trick was that, you know, people were swimming under him while he was walking. But they, had to, they just went deep enough, so they went right. under the bridge. Oh, that's Like, fucking... it was obvious. It, How do you mean it was obvious? Like, you could see that, like, his foot would make a little puddle. 
And then there was obviously some kind of surface. You, you can tell that? that something is You're a dick, dude. Oh, Why man. is that? Fucking giving away his secrets. Just blew up, <laughs> blew up his spot. You're big of an, You're just as big of an asshole as this guy. I want to see that. You're, you're not even masked. You don't like the masked magician, Danny? <laughs> no, he's an ass. <laughs> why, why would he throw away people's livelihoods like that? Masked magician. That's how Christ did it. Yeah. <laughs> Revealed. With the yeah. plexiglass. Yeah. Holy plexiglass. When I was a kid, they did this, but they did Pro Wrestling's Greatest Secrets Finally Reveal. <laughs> oh. And it was the worst show ever. They'd be yeah. like, did you know... The old women that they beat up in the crowd are actually plants. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like 13. And I was like, yeah, I kind of figured that. I didn't know that. Oh, look at this. Here it is. See, look at this. He walks off the edge of the pool. As if those are just hotel guests. Wow. Look. Wow. Like, there's obviously a surface there yeah, right there's, beneath there's the water. There's a surface. See, and she's wow. deep enough. But wait, the bubbles didn't come up <laughs> all the way. Well, that's because there's a clear acrylic board. Oh, is there? Yeah. See, I didn't know that. That's not true. He's just on hating on him. He's walking on water. No, he's not. But I see it. I see it. Like, uh, Jesus. Man. It's so obvious. Like, yeah, there are, and you can see where his feet are stomping on the yeah, board. Yeah, yeah. And he's got to do it and slow so it doesn't splash. You can see that nobody's directly in front of him. No, why are they right in front of him? That's true. Because I, I grab his leg and shake it. Would you? <laughs> oh, oh, and he did it to the side. Yeah, it, he's trying to make it like his shoe fell off right under his foot, but he w put his foot off to the side. Oh, but, now there's a there's a break in it right there. Go back a little. The, there's a break in the bridge. <laughs> Wait. There's a yeah. small break in the bridge, and that girl swam right through and he it. stepped over it stepped over the break see the thing is wouldn't you be embarrassed with all these people seeing how you did your trick they're all in on it yeah all of them yeah they're all in on it you ever see when he levitates and they show him levitating real high off the ground yeah, yeah. he's doing his little levitation thing where he just like stands on one toe uh -huh. and blocks it with his other foot yeah and then the people are like oh cool but then they show what they show is later done in production where he's up with a cable and he's levitated so why like real high. Yeah. Like it's just stunts. It works. It's fake. It's it's special effects. Really? Why? You saw the acrylic. Like it's just like filming a movie except pretending it's real life. Yeah, yeah. Like they do this stuff in movies and just say, yeah, of course it's fake. You know, We're the card tricks are very amazing. I'll give yeah. them that. Yeah. I like the sleight of hand stuff. Yeah, that and shit. The... But this fucking, this is nothing. I got 44 million views, man. It's so stupid. I like Chris, though. I mean, it's... He's a good guy, yeah. but that trick is dumb. Did you see when he levitated off of the top of uh, the hotel, the Pyramid Hotel there? Yes. The Luxor? It was magic. Uh, no, it was cables and a <laughs> helicopter. Yeah. And then they show it on television like it's really happening. Hey, look who's back. <laughs> the mask. Oh, the mask oh. vision. <laughs> oh, no. It's oh, is he doing the, uh, the, uh, the walk across water? Let's hear. Oh, no. People Let's are going to hear. People are going to think I figured out the secret from watching the mask. You did. But I, I would look, look at him suspiciously pool, dressed like that for the pool. Water and innocent spectators. Spectators, my ass. Can we zip through? Spectators, my fucking shit. You don't want to watch every painful minute of this? No, because Harvey will be here very shortly, and I want to get to this. Harvey? Harvey? He is walking on water. Oh, my God. I just saw this. I told you this was biblical. It looks exactly like the Chris Angel one. Yeah. While surrounded by spectators, the magician is walking across. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Then what happens? Jeez, do they milk this shit. Yeah. Come on. 44 million views, man. They should just called this show, Fuck You, Chris Angel. Up, <laughs> 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 oh, there's a ball going through it. We just saw the mass magician attempt a feat that has yes, been written about did. for more than 2,000 years. So the thousands. That's walking on water. Oh. And he did it in a pool surrounded by spectators yes, and his beautiful assistants. Ooh, uh, that was horse. Oh. So how did the magician create the illusion of walking on water? They're doing it exactly like the Chris Angel one. Within this industrial grade clear plexiglass. I can't believe what? I got it right. But yeah, but you didn't say it was industrial grade. <laughs> clear plexiglass <laughs> leg. You thought it was very thin. Yeah. <laughs> clear plexiglass. When it is submerged in the water, it disappears. And photographed from the correct angles, the plexiglass is invisible wow. and impossible to detect. But as the camera angle changes. The plexiglass becomes visible. Oh. The next secret is that oh, the assistants here? and innocent spectators in the pool have been paid to act like they can't see the plexiglass platforms. Yeah. All right. 
we gotta turn oh, this. I guess we gotta turn this off. All right. The platforms in this illusion oh. have been constructed Look, in we various don't know how it's done. planks. And are supported All by right. the clear legs that reach the bottom of the pool. <laughs> All right, turn it off. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you were terrified? There he is. Hi, Harvey. How are you hey, doing, guys. Harvey? How are you? Pleasure. Pull up a mic. Uh, oh, we're on. Yeah. <laughs> we just do it like this. People walk in. <laughs> we talk. We were just watching some... Uh, a uh, crappy uh, magician. Uh, you know that magician that gives away all the magic tricks on TV? Who's that? You see that guy? No. Uh, the masked magician. He debunks all the all the things that we believed were true magic. <laughs> it's, and it's heartbreaking. Yes, yes. It's terrible. Yeah, well. So you're here and you have a, a movie out. Uh, the Intouchables. Yeah. Which I saw last night. Yeah. Which I didn't know was a foreign film. Until he's, like, there was something about the opening scene, they're driving very quickly, and I'm like, it just doesn't look like America. And then they started talking in French, and I'm like, good call. Wow, you are sharp. Yeah, I really am. <laughs> Five minutes into the subtitles, I'm like, wait, this is probably not going to change. <laughs> but uh, how would you describe the movie? I liked it a lot, because I had no idea what it was about. I had no synopsis of it, um, no idea what to expect, and uh, I, I thought it was great. It's a true story, and um, it's the world's biggest comedy. People all over the world are seeing this in record numbers. You know, people. It is Fran It is in French with subtitles. We're thinking about doing a remake, but mm -hmm. it's a true story of this race car driver, this billionaire, you know, who loses his wife. He crashes his car at 180 miles an hour, and he becomes, uh, you know, f he has no feeling from the waist down. He doesn't want to hire anybody, you know, to take care of him who pities him. So he finds this street kid, you know, and together their relation, they, they, the relationship is anything but caretaker and patient. They go out and find girls. They jump out of airplanes. They drive race cars. They get in trouble with the police. It's, they, you know, I mean, it's just a wonderful, fabulous true story and you watch this movie and you feel great i wouldn't promote this movie unless i 100 percent really felt the audience would just love the film and feel great seeing it yeah, it's the second biggest huh. uh yeah. movie in french history like it's wow. made it's probably going to do a half a billion by the time it's finished it's yep. done like 340 million worldwide wow and uh yeah like this guy he's he plays a quadriplegic and there's a scene where the guy comes in and he's looking just to get on the, i guess to get what the equivalent of unemployment is in france um and he's just, the guy's just kind of being a dick. He's just going, could you sign this? I just want my benefits. And for some reason, the fact that he's kind of talking abusively or like an asshole to the guy in the chair, he likes that. Oh, really? He's like, he's yeah. the only one who's not showing me compassion or pity. He's the only one who's talking to me like a real person. <laughs> and uh, they had this really weird bond, and he hired him. And uh, it was great, man. I was, I was, I, wow. was all right, I cried a little bit. Oh, uh, did you? Yeah, I really hated it, too, because I'm like, I know they want me to cry. And I dropped a tear. I was like, oh, you uh, asshole. Oh, you did, did, yeah. I fell for it. Jimmy's a sensitive it's guy. Really ro it's romantic, and it's funny, and it's a true story. And I'll tell you, you know, the scene in, where we throw the guys out of the airplane, this, in, in the real movie, you see the footage. At the end of the movie, these two guys were crazy. They jumped out of an airplane, you know, the real guys that it's based on. And we have that footage. We use the little homemade footage at mm. the end of the movie. So our two actors, you know, we, we waited and waited and waited. We shot the entire movie. Last day, we said, come on, we'll take you up on the airplane. They figured it's going to be the typical Hollywood. There's going to be 75 stuntmen. Uh -huh. You know, they, we're just going to shoot their close-up. We, we, we said, no, we're going to throw you out of the plane. They go, what, what happens if we die? We said, we've got enough footage to cut the movie together. <laughs> it's already, we dedicate yeah. the film to you guys. <laughs> and we threw them out of the goddamn airplane. That is not CGI. That is those two guys scared shitless, if I can say. Wow. It and they, yeah. they've... Out of the plane. There's nothing. There's no... It's just the cameras on them. There's no cutting. Nothing. You're watching two frightened human beings wow. on an, out of an airplane. Now, wh wh who would you use in the remake, or do you not know yet? Well, he I signed Colin Firth to play the uh, billionaire. Wow. I mean, okay. you know, so he's done. And I got Paul Feig, the director of Bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, you know the, there's a twist with the girl in the movie. There's a very sexy girl, and then there's a twist on her. So there's a lot of girls who want to play that part. <laughs> you know, and... Um, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, the redhead. Right, the yeah, redhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's hot. She is hot, and um, and then uh, and you know, like you know, I think it's anybody from Jamie Fox, Chris Tucker, Chris Rock. Sway told me he wants to do it. Oh yeah, I bet. You know, and uh, uh, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not black, but I mean, I can really, I can play up any accent you need. It's a, it looks like a, <laughs> you mean you're willing to leave this show and come to yeah, Hollywood? Yeah, right. Well, just and make, out, and make out with like beautiful women if I cast. I'll it make out with Jamie Fox or Will Smith <laughs> if you wanted me to. I'm desperate, Harvey. <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing like, when you hear about a remake. It's like you immediately start thinking, who are they going to use? And of course. Of course, you just Will Smith is the go-to guy, but I think he's probably too old, and uh, yeah. you know maybe not too old, but you know this seemed like a younger dude, like a 25-year-old guy. Cock blocking. 
<laughs> in front of Yeah, you're right. Really right. Of Jesus. I'm He's like, I was thinking of him, but, you know, Jimmy said he is, and I think he, he might be right. I, I'm always saying this seemed like a young, streetwise guy it, who's it like is. 25 do, years you old. You do need a young guy. You oh, man. Guy. You know, but Chris Tucker, Chris Rock could do it, too. You know Chris mean? Tucker's doing stand-up again. I've been seeing him at the Comedy Cellar. It's like uh, you hadn't yeah. seen him for a while, and he's like starting to get back into stand-up, too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I like... just did a movie with Chris Tucker, and he is fabulous. It's funny, and also, you know, it's a movie with Bradley Cooper, Jennifer Lawrence, and Bob De Niro. It's called Silver Linings Handbook. He is great in the movie, and I had a really, really good time working with Chris. And he is doing stand-up. Is he? Yeah. yeah, you know, Quentin Tarantino and I were going to uh, once wanted to film him. You know, whatever. I tell Chris, I told Chris this story, and I'll, I'll tell you guys. It's the first time I ever said it publicly. So Quentin and I say, okay, Chris, why don't I'll produce it, Quentin will direct it. And Chris said, great. I said, we'll just do 50 50. You know, Quentin and I will split 50, you take 50, it's your stand up. He comes back to it, goes 90 10. Him. Whoa. <laughs> I, said, I said, I haven't worked for five since I was in junior <laughs> high school. And Quentin Tarantino, you're giving five. <laughs> so I've never, ever let Chris Tucker, if you're listening, forget this. Wait. Wow. Did, did he blow a chance to have you and Quentin do his stand up? Oh my God! How do you say? Why do you do that? Why do you do? It's, it's You're a, sure he meant ninety? I'm so sure. Way, I'm sure favorite? it's going to go ninety ten my way now. Yes. <laughs> wow. He hears this radio broadcast. Oh, is that a He'll be up? signing on the dotted line. Wow. Yeek. I mean, you always try to get a little. You know, because they always a get you. A little more, right? On stand up, they always get you on, the, on distribution fees. That's how a lot of the companies he do. Emails like, every. Oh can yeah. You come to work for me after the show. Well, I'm, no, I'm a stand up. Believe me, I've been fucked pretty good. <laughs> 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 but, you know, you get these guys like Tommy Mottola used to be a musician. He ran the record company. Yep. You know, you know Jimmy Iovine, whatever. You could come and work for me. Well, what they do? Can we find somebody. Do you, was there somebody you have in mind, or you want to just go solo? I'd, yeah, I'd be like yeah. the hacker I'll, who I'll goes after go other solo. hackers. Do you think they'll pay you his, his you could salary leave, you too? You could just leave me in the dust as you <laughs> yeah. go to Hollywood, Jimmy. <laughs> My right, salary thanks. is shite. Believe me, I'm easy to pull away <laughs> <Really>? from. <him. laughs> no, what they do is like when they say like we'll split the DVDs with you. We'll split it. Uh, we'll split it sixty forty. You know. But on top of that, there's a distribution fee, which kind of like a vid comes off the top, wow. which again is very standard. I mean, everybody does mm. it. So, businessman. Yeah, we just want to. You want to give your card to the entertainers when they, you know, when they're on this show. Yeah. You well, know everything about, or just open up a law firm. No, but you know what? I would just kind of go in and say that, and they would just find a way to talk around me because you know we still had, <laughs> we still got fucked on. It's like, yeah, but we, we don't change it. <laughs> like we we knew about it. They said we were the first. I'm the first comic to ever ask about it. And they're like, yeah, but we got to do it. We don't change yeah, it. But we're gonna yeah. still fuck you. Yeah. yeah. It's almost it's almost like when you're going to get electrocuted. You're like you're, you're going to to pull that switch and I'm going to die and they go yeah that's what's going to happen <laughs> and there's really not a whole lot you can say no. about it oh my god the you mean, people they're, they're not they're not going to exactly. I think people are people are very uh, I guess not very knowledgeable about what you do what is it that you do in in the movie industry well I, I do a number of things I guess the thing that I do um, most well known for is I'll find the book like this book we we're talking about silver linings a woman who worked for me said read this book 5 years ago 6 years ago I read the book Loved it. We bought it. We hired David R. Russell, who we also co-produced The Fighter with, to write the script, direct the movie. We, you know, we went after people. I was involved in the casting with Bradley and Jennifer. And, of course, Bob Dinner, you don't have to be involved in You just pray and hope you get him. <laughs> yeah. And Chris Tucker. And, um, you know, we put the, you know, the project together. And we hire all the people. We get the financing. We produce the movie. And it's an art, you mean, producing the movie, but it's just because, you know, it's tied into money and financing. It does seem very business. And you see 27 yeah. names sometimes. You know, I, I go out, produced by 27 uh -huh. people. You don't realize who actually does the work. The 26 other people are the guys who wrote the check. Oh, so, okay. I mean, well, wow, there a, should be a distinction between the person that actually has to know the, the talent, know who's going to work in this movie well, and the guy that's just writing the check. They're starting to do that now. Are with they? Guild, they're doing a little mark thing I mean, that, that, that does distinguish it. Hmm. And then very often, like this, in the case of this, we read the script of The Untouchables. They were, gonna, they were making it in France at the time, and we came in. We loved the script. We saw some footage, and we bought the movie for a bunch of territories. So in that case, we're acquiring movies and distributing movies. Hmm. Have there been any that you pay? Because you're known as a very ballsy guy. Like You'll just go out and grab something, and you make a lot of amazing, smart moves. Has there been anything that you like? Like Chris Tucker will look back on that and go, God, that was really a, a bad move on my part. <laughs> like, is there, is there anything... Especially when he hears it today. Yeah. It was a really, it was not a bright move. and I, I don't really know him well, but that's the first thing I'm going to say if I ever see him again. Hi, Chris, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> is there anything that you passed on that you look back on and go, man, we probably should have uh, taken that one? I, I, I missed the first five minutes of La Femme Nikita at a screening. The French movie, the Luc mm -hmm. Besson did. Right. And I'm five minutes late for a screening. It taught me a lesson for life. Always get there five, ten minutes early. 
So I missed the first five minutes, and the movie made no sense to me. So they gave it to me on a silver oh. platter, and I said, I, I don't get it. And then I realized the first five minutes is you see what she's screwed up. She's out of her mind. She goes in and robs this store because she's a street person dying mm -hmm. for dope. And then they train her to become an assassin. So I missed the setup. And then I made no sense. I'm just watching this girl, and she's training, and I'm going, what the, what's the big deal with this? Right. Movie? It's like missing the first uh, five or ten minutes of a Columbo episode. Exactly. That's when the crime is done. And and if you miss that, you might as well not watch it because exactly. then he's solve he's trying to solve stuff and you're like I don't even know what happened. Although the giveaway is whoever Columbo talks to in every other scene, <laughs> yes. that would be the guy that did it. I missed the first five minutes, but he's talking yeah, to yeah. Johnny Cash for There's some reason. No reason. <laughs> <laughs> but he shot his wife. Believe me, Martin Landau is in here as an extra. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the biggest star <laughs> right. is the murderer that he's talking to. Jesus, yeah. I never figured that out. God, I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I should have called you on that. One. Yeah, I'm a Columbo <laughs> expert. It's kind of my thing. Just comedy's not really panning out, so I do Columbo <laughs> panel. And people ask panels. What was uh, you obviously you were with Miramax and uh, and you, and you left and started the Weinstein Company with your brother. What was it that finally made you go like, eh, I, I want to go out and, and and do something on my own? Was there something that was happening that you just weren't happy with? Well, Miramax started. Bob and I started Miramax. Miramax is named after my mom, Miriam, who's eighty six years oh. old. And if she's listening, oh, wow. if she's listening to this show, I'm going to have a long time. Yeah, we'd be her. very shocked. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> me too. <laughs> and uh, and and my dad, you know, uh, we lost him when you know early, but. Uh, uh, he was a great inspiration to us. We started the company, and then we got we made a part. We were sold to Disney. Then we made a partnership with Disney, and we just had you know some fights with corporate management. I'll tell you the truth, guys. We did we made Fahrenheit 9/11 with Michael Moore, and they hated it. You know I mean, hmm. they thought it was like, oh my God, they're going to dethrone President Bush, and we're going to get into all sorts of trouble as a company, the Walt Disney Company, and it just exacerbated. I also brought them Lord of the Rings which is a project that I developed, all three scripts, and they wouldn't finance them. I mean, they got pissed off. It only cost them and me $2.3 billion. That's it. Today, yeah. I could have owned Sirius. Instead, I'm a guest <laughs> Believe me, we wish you did. Oh, we <laughs> wish. <laughs> no, Mel, they're, they're kidding. <laughs> John Malone, they're kidding. No. <laughs> so, Greg Maffei, they're really kidding. Wow, he knows all of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're men I've never met them. before. Scott, 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 oh, yeah. Scott, Scott Greenstein, they're kidding. <laughs> Scott, I know. They are, they are kidding. <laughs> so, so, wait, you... you you, you brought Lord of the, now you don't have Lord of the Rings. Who actually did Lord of the Rings? I have a, I, Lord of the Rings ended up uh, being produced by New Line. They had mm -hmm. the guts, the balls, as you can say on this show, right. to take that project. We have a you know percentage of the gross, so we did extremely well. <clears throat> wow. You know I mean, but uh, but it was personal. Actually, Disney was so unhappy with the idea of it that they gave Bob and I a personal share. God, and uh, nice. and how do you pass on Lord of the Rings? And not only that, we showed them ten minutes of the technology. This. The guy who was running at the time was a guy named Michael Eisner. We showed him 10 minutes of what you know it looked like with 10,000 extras uh -huh. you know, in all those scenes. Peter Jackson developed all that. We financed. We put $10 million into financing it. So between Fahrenheit 9-11 and Lord of the Rings, and then we were going to try to do this channel, like a Miramax channel. Scott Greenstein knows a lot about this because he used to work with us. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I think these three things exacerbated, and we just said it's time to go. And I think they thought it was time for us to go too. <laughs> you guys were synonymous they weren't, with. They weren't Miramax. sad, you know. I mean, you know, when we yeah. walked out the door, there wasn't like tears and. Did really they at least pretend to try to keep you, or they were like the minute you said no, you they, wanted no, to? No, no, no. They made us. They, they, you know, they, they made us a very serious offer oh. to stay. They did. They did make us a very serious offer to stay, but it was it, it didn't have the same freedoms that you know that we had enjoyed previously. Mm. Anyhow, it all turned out for the best. Like, you, but you like the idea that you can just go out and kind of grab whatever you want to grab. Like, this is a movie that uh, maybe because it's made three hundred forty million, people would go, "All right, let's do something with it." <laughs> but before that, a lot of people might not see this concept and go, hey, "Yeah, that'd I, be a great I bought comedy. it. Hadn't been released. I read it on a script. I oh, okay. saw footage. The movie had never been in a theater. I mean, you know, so I mean, it just it's the same thing like with the artist last year. You know, I sat, oh, right. right, I sat and watched a black and white movie. You know, people in my own company thought I was a lunatic, you know, and, uh, you know, to do that. Like, you know, they said, oh, are you, you know, we, we produced the King's Speech, so it won the Oscar the year before, and they thought with the artist, it was like hubris. Oh, my God. Now they think they just did a movie with stuttering that grossed $400 million. <laughs> yeah. Now they're going to do a black and white silent movie, you know what I mean? And they, nobody, stuttering is like a, was the action scene compared to having nothing in right. the artist. And people told us are crazy. So right now the movie's up to $160 million worldwide. For a black and white. And won the Oscar and yeah, four yeah. other Oscars. One of my favorite things about the artist was the fact that Malcolm McDowell did a cameo. They got Malcolm McDowell just to do a weird little cameo sitting yeah, there, yeah. like kind of like he was waiting to do something. And he talked to, I forget what her name, uh, 
Oh, Pepe. Berenice, uh, Berenice Bajon. Oh, who Pepe. was it? Pepe in the, in the, in the yeah. film. And that was all Malcolm McDowell was in. Yeah. I'm like, what a great thing to get but, Malcolm. But, but you know, when you work with the director, the guy's name is Michelle Hasnavisius, and I'd seen his two other movies. He is a genius. You know, he's like a Billy Wilder. He's a throwback to the great directors like Ernst Lubitsch, Billy Wilder. I mean, once upon a time, you used to watch these comedies, and they made sense from beginning, middle, and end, and hmm. they were smart and emotional. That's what The Untouchables is a throwback to. Too, you know, I mean, just you know, it's really smart storytelling, and that's why it's grossed so much money. Even you know, you mm. see these big special effects movies. Five minutes in, you're going, Jesus Christ, I've seen that before. Right. Yeah. Ten minutes in, you're saying, I'm so bored. <laughs> Twenty minutes in, you say, Can anybody act in this movie? Mm -hmm. A half an hour, and you go, Who the hell financed this movie? Right. Do you, you know what I mean? And you're just going, Oh my God, I'm sick of these effects. I'm sick of everything. Can I go now? And The Untouchables is that human storytelling. And, you know, Hollywood doesn't understand it. You, you make a movie about two people mm. who are friends, go through tr trials and tribulations, and you're laughing your ass off and you're enjoying it, and you walk out of the theater and, you know, you can dance, you can it's very smile. It's very rare that um, you'll get uh, a movie where there is good storytelling, good acting. It's, it's, it's so hard to find these days. And I, I'm not sure how, how does that play in America? I, I really kind of, I'm so jaded now with the American public and what they find um, entertaining these well, days. Well, listen, if you give it to them, they'll come. You know, this uh, Marigold's movie is not my movie. You know, with Judy Dench and Maggie Smith, it's terrific. You what know, movie is it? It's such fun. It's the Marigold Hotel. Mm -hmm. It's a really charming movie, but it makes sense. Beginning, middle, and mm. end. John Madden, we did a movie with him called Shakespeare in Love. He's a wonderful director, and the movie's a wonderful movie. I think, you know, we market and bombard these big movies because we're yeah. looking for a common denominator and i think you know when you you know these small movies can work and these small movies can become big movies look at the king's speech 400 yeah. million dollars it cost 15 million dollars to make the movie yeah. worldwide gross the, look at this uh you I mean the untouchables 15 million dollar movie 350 million so far it's what he said can gross 500 million dollars this movie and it's doing great in america yeah great what i liked Canada. about it too is the, the the it wasn't schmaltzy interaction like that's what was surprising to me was like usually there's he really was fucking with the guy uh who oh, yeah. was quadriplegic and it, it was an interaction like that's how somebody who really likes you treats you hmm. and it was an oddly non-schmaltzy interaction which i liked the second i saw what it was i'm like okay i kind of know where this is gonna go but i didn't it was uh it was much harsher <laughs> dialogue and much harsher interaction that I, I was like fuck i'm so happy he said that <laughs> there was really yeah. really some great moments in it and uh yeah the guy's feeding the guy and you know the girl walks in the room and she's got a great butt you know whatever he he pushes, the, he pushes the guy aside, gets food all over the guy, doesn't give a shit, whatever. He just loves that butt and loves that girl. It's, and that's what happened. These two guys are like that. I met the one, you mean, and, and they are like that. You know, they are 100% that was their relationship. Yeah, and they show them at the end in photos and, and in video, which is kind of cool. I, I always like that when it's based on a true story, to see the real people at the end. There's just something about that, like, okay, mm. they really are. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it's, it seems like it would be such a difficult thing to read through something like you did a script or a book or something and, and not just go like, eh, or read everything and go, oh, God, that could be a movie. That could be a movie. That well, like, think, what, how do you pick you, think, and choose? I think instinctively you know. I mean, you just you know, know, you know what's point, good yeah. at this point, you know. And, you know, it's just uh, it's almost like reading a book. You say, is that a good book or a bad book? How many books have we all read? You have to look at it in a different way, though. Can you make it, can it work in a visual medium like that? Uh, which has to just boggle the mind, though, sometimes. Do you, do you still, and you, obviously you have a lot of experience, do you still kind of mull it over and go like, yeah, it's good, but... Listen, I, if, you know, half the time if I went through my movie list, you talk about my, I did a movie, My Left Foot, does that make any mm -hmm. sense? You know, I mean, you know, it's a guy who only has a left foot. Yeah, then, yeah. Then you add Daniel Day-Lewis to the equation, and you've got something magical. Yeah. Look, look I don't believe in boundaries or barriers. So I just let let imagine it. And, you know, for me, it's just if we like it, we think other people will like it, too. And we're not like, oh, my God, if we like it, like we're snobs or anything like that. We want people to go to the movies. I love movies. I love James Bond movie. I love good, yeah. fun movie. But I like them when they're done well. Like the Bond movies now are done well. Yeah, yeah. Because he's yeah. amazing. And Judy Dench yeah, is Daniel amazing. Yeah, Daniel Craig is uh, but, you know, Craig's really great. Bond. Bond. Great Bond. He's yeah. great. But the artist, like when you think of something like the artist, do, how do you look at that in a script? 
and know that because there's one one of the best scenes and it. it's an odd scene it's a, it's a i guess i don't know what the name of the shot is but it's, it's a faraway shot of them walking up and down stairs uh and kind of hustling and bustling and going about their day and it's kind of a faraway shot of steps and it was all done in one shot mm. and i'm like what a visual masterpiece this is how do you read that in a script and go okay uh, here, people walk up and down the steps <laughs> 30 seconds. How does that read in a script? Michelle, Michelle, when you read Michelle's script to the artist, it's so beautifully described. And, you know, Michelle gave me a movie. It's called City Girl. It's by this guy, Murnau, the director. And that scene was a tribute, you know, to the silent movies. You watch some of these silent movies because they couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's, the visuals are so strong, so amazing. Anybody who doesn't, you know, it just t on an accessible level... Go watch Charlie Chaplin City Lights. Here, I'll put it to your audience in a way that they'll understand it. I guarantee that if a guy takes a girl and you get that DVD of Charlie Chaplin City Lights, you're going to score at the end of the night. One hundred percent. This movie is a. There's a hundred percent guarantee. I've tried the same thing, but with the kid, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, wrong movie. At the comedy cellar, they show Chaplin. That, that works for yeah, Sandusky. Yeah. That doesn't work for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little horseplay. There was a uh, oh, <laughs> horseplay. Naughty, naughty Jerry. Oh boy. There's at the comedy cellar upstairs at the Olive Tree Restaurant above the Comedy Club. They have they show Chaplin films on a loop. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing that people, uh, while you're eating, you always see people looking up and, and getting glued yeah, into the Yeah, but they watch two seconds of it. Watch City yeah, yeah. Lights from beginning to end. You know, whatever. It is so funny, so romantic, and it comes with a guarantee. Man, well, you realize how much, too. <laughs> you realize how much is and, wasted. And, and if the girl... Is it interested at the end of it? She's not worth it. Get rid of her. She's not worth it. Get rid of her. If she doesn't like that movie, Quentin Tarantino always said to me, the first thing he does is he shows the girl Rio Bravo, the John Wayne movie, uh -huh. and he says, if they can't watch Rio Bravo, it's over. He said, wow, there's no really point. Wow, that's really pigeon you know, he, <laughs> Look at Rio Bravo. You think it's just the John Wayne Western? Angie Dickinson is so sexy in that movie. That's a Howard Hawks movie, the guy who did His Girl Friday, the dialogue. You you watch the dialogue again in that movie. Every everything she says is the hottest come ons ever <laughs> yeah. in that movie. That's why Rio Bravo has been enduring. That's the beauty Not of Tarantino. Not because of the gunfight. Yeah. You, you're Tarantino. You can do that. You can go. All right. Look, I'll bang you, but you have to like this movie. <laughs> I take what I can get. I watch what she wants to watch. <laughs> That's the mistake. You're watching mistake. Bridges of Madison County. <laughs> Whatever she wants to watch. I want Golden Pond. Look, I have a heart on. <laughs> now, now I know. No way Nicholas Sparks has a career. <laughs> yeah, but I... Oh, God. Didn't Howard Hughes used to do that, too? Wouldn't he kind of, like, get girls a, a, and have them watch certain movies and just kind of make them... Well, mostly he would make them watch serious... I Made the Aviator with Marty Scorsese. Mm. So he did a lot of research on Howard Hughes. What Howard Hughes would do is he'd make them watch, he'd make them watch that movie. That movie was called Hell's Angels. Oh, and right, he, right. He made his, you know, his incredible epic yep, of airplanes because he was a great aviator. So over and over and over again, he'd take these girls and they have to watch that movie. That's yeah. odd. And wouldn't he buy up their contracts? Like he was, I guess, because he kind of, he was OCD and he hoarded stuff. Um, I, I heard he would buy up their contracts and just kind of, kind of just kind of keep them on hold. Yeah, 26 girls under contract on any given day. And he used to put them all over Beverly. Hills, and what he would do is he'd hire drivers who were Mormons, you know, I mean, probably Mitt Romney's grandfather, <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> just a joke. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, and and they would drive these girls because they were quote you know religious and they wouldn't interfere. You know, but of course, the, some of the guys did, mm. and they would be you know, and and the, sometimes these girls would wait six months to see how it used. Wow. Just sitting there in sitting Beverly there, Hills somewhere, yeah. waiting. Sitting there in Beverly Hills, under waiting. contract. Yep. Mm -hmm. When you got yeah, into the, guy. you got into the business, you you probably didn't get into it. Say, okay, I'm going to run a studio someday. When you first got in, what did you go like? This is what I want to do, and it kind of became this. Well, I love movies. I mean, I love movies when I was a kid, you know, and uh, I loved baseball when I was a kid. I realized very quickly, you know, that that baseball career wasn't happening, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so I love film. I studied film. You know, I went to film school. I studied with this great uh, Dr. O'Grady. And, um, you know, I just love movies. So, I, no, we never think and envision that it's going to be a studio. You just say, I want to make movies or I mm. want to do something in the movie industry. And I loved to read when I was a kid. I had my eye poked out when I was 11. I was playing some stupid cowboy and Indian game. And, and coincidentally and good for me was there was a woman next door who was a librarian. She was 72 years old, retired. So I knocked on her door. I said, I'm bored to death. I can't go to school. What do you recommend? And she put me on a reading course. And, you know, she started with these American books and then graduated to international books. And, you know, read, reading is the key. 
reading really is the key. It's in a, you make a movie every day, guys. You know, mm. Just go read, read some of these great books. You read Gone with the Wind. You read War and Peace. Those are great, great books. Yeah. Wow. What do you think makes a lousy movie? Because, you know, you see a lot of lousy movies. And what, without even going into what movies they are, what will you look at in a movie and go like, ugh, this is going to be awful? The script. I mean, mm -hmm. when you hear those incredible lines of dialogue, you, you know, I don't care if you're Russell Crowe or Laurence Olivier or, you know, Charlie Chaplin, you cannot put crappy lines over. You just can't do it. You know, how does that I, stuff get through? Like, because, like, guys see that and, like, the actors do it. Like, how does somebody not go, like, damn, cheesy? <laughs> That's terrible. People yeah. are blind. You know, whatever. They read this crap. They think it's, they, they, they think, you know. As my father would say, they think their S doesn't shine, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or they think their S shines, you know, and, uh, and uh, um, you know, it's just, they, they just believe it. And, you know, you know this industry, you probably have this all day long, six, seven people telling you how great you are every day. <laughs> no, 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 really? no, no, come no. on, you must have Cumulatively, a Cumulatively, if you want to go, like, in a calendar year, <laughs> I'll get six or seven, but no, a day, no. <laughs> You're giving me a lot of credit. I appreciate what, what did you think, because uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino is great at writing dialogue. Uh, it's just amazing to, to watch his movies and watch people just exchange words it doesn't have to be an action sequence or anything. Just people talking is uh, compelling. What did you think when you first met him? Did he come off as a weird guy? No, not at all. I mean, he came off as a you know guy who knew movies, knew cinema better than anybody, and his knowledge is so vast and mm. deep. You know, he named his company Band Apart, which is named after a Jean-Luc Godard movie. This guy knows everything about films. He's an encyclopedia. For a guy like me who went to film school, he, he was film school. Hmm. He's really intelligent and a really humanistic guy. But his dialogue is a special effect. There's nobody who can write like Quentin in the movie industry. Yeah. This guy can have five pages of two people talking to each other, eating a pie, and you're laughing and you're scared shit at the same time. And I just, yeah. got, I just came back from New Orleans where we're shooting Django, mm -hmm. you know, the new movie with Jamie Foxx yeah. and Kerry Washington and Sam Jackson and Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, t it just, inc if it, they, people think Inglorious Bastards kicked ass, wait. <laughs> yeah, I saw the uh, trailer for it. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's a throwback to it, because he, he does a great job with uh, taking some stuff from the past and bringing it up like he did uh, with, um, oh, what the hell was that, the uh, uh, Grindhouse stuff right. that he mm -hmm. did. And this is a, uh, it, it's like a throwback to the black exploitation movies uh, and the spaghetti of the westerns. 70s and spaghetti westerns. Yeah, it looks pretty damn good. And I like uh, Leo. Leo, Leo is really about good. the most evil thing I've ever seen. Yeah, you know he is evil personified. He's brilliant, brilliant performer. <laughs> well, he's not. It seems like Tarantino is not afraid to take like. Uh, 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 a banal subject and make a real conversation about it, whether it's uh, gourmet coffee in uh, Pulp Fiction or tipping. And for some reason, the natural flow of the conversation makes it fascinating. And that's what's great is these, these guys are talking about tipping. Who gives a shit? Yeah. In Reservoir Dogs, but it's right. an amazing scene hearing guys speak naturally about something. To open a movie with exactly. just dialogue yeah. is amazing. Like, who the hell would think doing but that who without... Who the hell can write dialogue? Right. You would think you want an action sequence God. to capture people? But his dialogue is an action yep. sequence. Yeah. You're laughing and suspenseful at the same time. Who leaves the tip? I mean, yeah, who yeah. writes like that? You're yeah. throwing a buck. <laughs> throwing a buck. You know, Quentin's an actor, too. You know what I mean? So he's a brilliant director, but he has an actor's ear for dialogue. Mm -hmm. You know, so he can real, and he can also tell when it's performed right, too. You know, just takes brilliant people to also do that kind of dialogue. Yeah. I mean, I was amazed watching DiCaprio because, you know, you wonder every time he's new to the Tarantino family. You know, Sam Jackson, he does it in his right. sleep. You know, <laughs> you know uh, Brad Pitt got it like day two. You know, just did it great. Got the single patient. I, I, I swear, I watched DiCaprio, and I, I, Quentin and I both were like blown away. I mean, the rhythm. He got right into the rhythm of it. You can give that kid a speech; he can talk for a day. You know what I mean, you know, and and just watch him talk. You whatever you go, and don't worry, we kill plenty of people in this room. <laughs> sex, <laughs> up, <laughs> sex up the wazoo. You know, we, we didn't forget where we came from. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in, in, in Glorious Bastards, I, is, it, is it Christoph Waltz? Yeah, Christoph. Oh my God, he's, he's in he's in Django. Yeah, too. he's in Django. Yep. Yeah. To play a, a funny, 
Nazi. There was a charm to him, an odd charm in him being a psychopath. Was that written to be humorous, or is that did he just grab that and kind of make it? No, that? no, no. It was uh, that he said every word, and he said it exactly the way Quentin intended it. Quentin sees all shades of people, hmm. whatever. So he real. I mean, he he is the greatest opportunist of all time, Christoph Waltz. I think you know. He, I think beyond being a Nazi, he's just in it for himself. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, another sequence that started a movie off. And it was oh, so right. suspenseful yeah. and compelling. You were just hooked. You could not, I couldn't imagine going like, meh, <laughs> meh, take it or leave it. You would just edge of your seat uh, uh, taken. And there wasn't action going on. It was a dialogue between that father and him at that table. And the little, those little um, things like the, the milk, getting the milk for him. Just frightening. This and then, guy's and then frightening later on, Santa. Christoph Waltz has a scene with the girl when she's all grown up. Yeah. And he's eating a pie, and he turns to the waiter and says, can I have some milk? Yeah. And the milk comes to the table, and then you're reminded of the milk at the beginning of the scene. I mean, you know, who <laughs> yeah. does that in a movie? Fantastic. That's terrible. He's yeah. not afraid to let things just kind of sink in. He's not afraid to let things breathe a little yeah. bit. I hate to say that, but it's, it's what makes his movies great. He's synonymous with uh, Miramax. Like, that was a whole... And, and now the in the 90s, company, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a very loyal guy. Yep, yeah, apparently really so. Is incredible. We've done every movie together. Good gotta since have. The beginning of it. Since <laughs> Good gotta have in the stable. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's, he's like Babe Ruth. He's the house that Quentin built. Yeah, we had a house that Quentin built. That's I was in one. Uh, I believe you guys did comedian Seinfeld's movie. Yes. And I had one line. This is why I, 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 oh, I, I, I love Jimmy. the YC. This is why, because uh, I had one line in that movie. I was on stage when Sherrod was going to bring on Jerry, and I got a full day's pay for it, and they didn't have to give me anything. They just kind of panned by me for a half a second. Really? Yeah. But a lot of people said I was kind of the pivotal point of the film, which I appreciate. Yeah, I said it. And Seinfeld, in, in his true moments, said it too. You know, when he wasn't thinking it was him, he thought it was you. <laughs> Can I tell you something? That, that to me always, that bothers me, that movie, because that is a really underrated movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the critics liked it, but the audiences, I don't think, understood what Jerry yeah. was just trying to, you know, to take the process of movie making, uh, of not movie making, of being yeah. a comedian, of stand-up, and just showing it. And you watch it. It's as good as any documentary. I've, I've done the Michael Moores. I've done Errol Morris. I've done some of the, you know, so-called really important groundbreaking documentaries. But there was something about that on a, just on a me personal level. I know Bob felt the same way. That was just breathtaking to get into that world. He really got you into that world. Do you think the timing-wise, coming off of a huge show like Seinfeld, people kind of wanted to see Seinfeld? I I think that was it. I and, mean, at the end of the day, you said Seinfeld as a director. Yeah. You mean, you know, and then you just, yeah, uh, yeah they were expecting, yeah. It was fantastic, though, because there were so many uncomfortable moments in that, too, where you're kind of like, this is the guy from that huge hit show, and it's like he's starting all over again. Had Marty Scorsese made Comedian, hmm. I think the audience would have gone. And, and you know what, I'm not saying it because... I think Jerry did an amazing job. Just sure, if you would have sub I think your theory is right. Substitute Scorsese's name yeah. for Seinfeld, mm -hmm. and then they look at the movie a different way than everybody wants to see it. Yeah, it was interesting. At Governors too, like th this is just so typical New York. He's at Governors, and they're talking, and it's like this uh, guy, this this is Seinfeld, Seinfeld on stage, and he has to scold the audience for talking. I like that he showed that, and that's you know kind of what comics have to deal with. Yeah, yep. I just don't get on a private plane after I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we kind of part company, but it really yeah. was. Great oh, to that's watch. where you part company. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe many other ways. Uh, well, Harvey's promoting, and uh, it's very rare that you go out and actually oh, yeah. do all this promotion yourself. So it's great to have you in. Thank um, you very much, guys, for having me. And uh, a true contributor you are uh, to films. Uh, it's The Untouchables. It's out now in limited release. Um, I'm, I don't know where people can find out where it's, it's playing. New York. It's you're playing, you know, New York, Chicago, you know, Paris, New York, Chicago. It's playing about fifty cities in the, in oh, the okay. country, and it's going to expand even further in July. Is it? In, we're heard in Canada as well. Is it's it in playing Canada? in Canada as well too. It's doing great up there. It's a everywhere. great movie. Um, it is not uh, again. It's not sh a schmaltzy interaction, and it's based on a true story of a quadriplegic who is uh, taken care of by this uh, inner city guy who is not a guy who would be likely to take care of him, mm. which is kind of why they made the movie, because right, who would right. give a shit if it was just a guy they hired who was nice to him? <laughs> now, now my brother him. always says, when you hear, like, it's about a quadriplegic, my brother says, I'm definitely not going. <laughs> so I'm telling yeah. you, here, let me, let me do that part. Uh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Did I not sell it right? <laughs> <laughs> let me do that part. <laughs> this movie is probably, you know, and I think you, you, if you watch it in a theater, it's probably the most uplifting movie. You walk in, forget quadriplegic, any of that stuff. It's just the relationship between two guys from opposite sides of the track, and it's so much fun and is really an amazing... I mean, you just... Like you said, if it can make him cry, mm. 
just imagine what it does to the rest of the country. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so my comparison was not going to be good. I was going to say it's like Lethal Weapon meets Whose Life Is It Anyway? Much better. <laughs> but I'm not... Much better. Much better. I love that it's like meets, yeah, oh boy. But it, 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 it really better. is great, and uh, you know, it's, it's easy to promote a movie that I genuinely liked. And, and Harvey's uh, track record is uh, pretty good. Tremendous. Pretty good. Yeah. I'll stake my reputation on yeah. this movie. Again, and right? you need to Good. do another documentary about uh, comedians. I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh. I'm not pitching myself. Maybe a comedian who's kind of out of shape, who likes transgendered friends. <laughs> Whatever. I'd be happy to audition for that. But um, I guess we're done for the day. Yeah. Let's, uh, let take me promote off, sure. one thing. This Friday, oh, yeah. I'm at the uh, Melrose Improv doing one show at 8 o'clock. Uh, so if you're out in L.A., come see me Go there. Go see Jimmy. And uh, The Untouchables is out now. Great. Great release. Harvey O. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much, man. What a Great pleasure. You. Thank you, guys. Thanks. We're done. The Owen and Anthony show is pretty much over. But if you feel like sticking around after ONA Live is next.